start of the season brought optimism to everyone. Players reached for new heights. But some paid the price. After 15 weeks, only two teams will make the trip to Tacoma. The Indians of Arkansas State bring with them the determination to be champions. Junior quarterback Dwayne Brown rushed for two touchdowns and passed for another to give Larry Lacewell's club a win over Eastern Kentucky and a shot at the national championship. Georgia Southern's Tracy Ham knows all about national titles. Last week against number one ranked Nevada Reno, Ham turned in a championship-like performance by rushing and passing for two touchdowns each as the Eagles turned back the pack 48-38. With Ham at the helm, Georgia Southern is looking for a second straight title. We are in Tacoma at the Tacoma Dome, Arkansas State and Georgia Southern. The Division I AA National Championship next on ESPN. Tonight, two teams from the Deep South have made their way to the area known as the Puget Sound of the Pacific Northwest, Georgia Southern and Arkansas State in the Tacoma Dome for the National Championship. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Tim Brando, joined by Kevin Kiley for tonight's game. And get ready, fans, we've got some offense. Well, defense usually wins championships, Tim, but not tonight. It's the ham bone and the wishbone, and neither one of them have any trouble getting into the end zone. Georgia Southern averaging over 50 points a game in the playoffs, Arkansas State, 40 points a game. It's going to be a track beat. Kevin, Georgia Southern has an opportunity to repeat, and there is one major reason why. Tracy Ham, one of the great players in America today, the quarterback for Georgia Southern. The guy's career stats are unbelievable. Almost 6,000 yards passing, over 3,000 yards rushing. He's the emotional leader of this team, both on and off the field. A truly a great player, absolutely irreplaceable, and he's got to go tonight. Gerald Harris, right behind him, the fullback. They're very strong up the middle. This guy is a super player. He's Mr. December. In the playoffs, the last two years, in seven games, 885 yards rushing, 17 touchdowns. This year, he's got 10 touchdowns in the last three games. Eric Russell is a legend, the head coach of Georgia Southern in the Peachtree State, and it's because of his junkyard dog defense under Vince Dooley for so many years. Seems a little ironic that coming into tonight's game, it's defense that is his club's Achilles heel. Well, 17 years at Georgia, he's proven he can coach defense, but he plays that 60 defense, and you need players to do it. Maybe he doesn't have all the players he needs here. In order to stop the run with the 60 defense, you need those two big guys up front. He's got two pretty good ones here at Georgia Southern. Two tackles, Donnie Allen and Larry Boone. Boone's about 265 pounds. He's an outstanding player. These guys are going to have to be very, very tough tonight to stop that wishbone of Arkansas State. Now the Indians of Arkansas State can roll up some big numbers as well, but Kevin, they come in tonight a bit crippled with an injured running back. A terrible break. The fullback in the wishbone is a key player. Ricky Jemison hurt his knee a couple of weeks ago. Last week he missed the first game of his career. He will play tonight, but he has an injured knee. He's about 90%. How well will he do tonight? Can he go back and forth? Can he run for the long one? He's capable of it. I don't know what the injury we'll have to see. Richard Kimball, a redshirt freshman, he's the backup. How well he plays starting for Jemison will be a big factor. Now, if Tracy is the ham of the ham bone for Georgia Southern, then the prime rib of Arkansas State's offense is his counterpart, quarterback Dwayne Brown. And he's been called by his coach the best wishbone quarterback in the United States. He's just five foot nine, but he's the Southland Conference Player of the Year, the first Arkansas State player ever to be named Player of the Year. What does he do well? Well, he does everything well, but probably his most important asset is he's smart. They don't use a huddle. He reads the defense of the line of scrimmage, and he calls the play. He's a big man in that offense. While offense seems to be the scenario for tonight's 1AA championship, let's not discount Arkansas State's defense. They have a very sound one, and it could be the catalyst here. A nationally ranked defense kind of gets lost, doesn't it, in all the offense, but a great defense. Fourth in the nation, they give up only a little over 11 points a game. 11th in the nation in total defense, an outstanding unit. And in order to have an outstanding defensive unit, you've got to be strong up the middle they are. Charlie Frederick, they've got a middle guard. He's a great player. Goes sideline to sideline. His responsibility tonight, 
shut off that inside running game of Georgia Southern. If you do that, you have a chance against Tracy Ham and some of the great skill people that they have. Larry Lacewell has done an outstanding job with Arkansas State in Jonesboro. And uh, you know he's going to have a sound defense because he tutored under Barry Switzer and coached some pretty good players in Sooner Country. He's got the offense and he's got the defense. And it's really no surprise because Lacewell's a winner. He comes from Oklahoma. We all know what they do. And he's taught this team how to win. Three straight years, they're in the playoffs. Now they're in the championship game, and these guys are ready. But first, they've got to beat a team that's already won it. Georgia Southern has the confidence. Lacewell's a winner. We'll see what happens. Going to be a track beat, like I said. All right, a lot of offense and a sound defense from Arkansas State. We'll see what happens. The Georgia Southern Eagles are making their way out onto the field, trying to defend their one double-A national title. And the Indians from Jonesboro stand in their way. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. ESPN's live presentation of the Division I AA National Championship is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Volvo, a car you can believe in. And by the people who make glass containers, naturally. Brando and Kevin Kiley back at the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington, and the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Arkansas State Indians preparing for the national championship of Division I AA. The coin toss is forthcoming, and when you start talking about importance, are a lot of young men playing their last game ever in this one right here, Kevin. Especially at Georgia Southern, when you, when you think about it, a lot of the key players on the team are fifth-year seniors who started the program. And what an emotional game it must be uh, for Irk Russell and all of these guys. And Tracy Hamm, of course, is a fifth-year senior, one of those players, number eight. Whoever gets the opening kickoff will have a decided advantage in this one. Let's listen in to the coin toss. We've got Captain Hamm, Captain Harris, and Captain Durham. You may shake hands. Hey, Georgia Southern, you are the visiting team. You got tails, heads. Who's going to make the call? Please call it loud. If I should drop it, we'll do it again, all right? Please call in the air. You called heads. Heads it is, you have won the toss. You have your choice, first half, second half. The Eagles have won the toss, and I think it's obvious what their answer will be. <laughs> yeah, they can't wait to get their hands on the ball. You will receive. What goal do you want to defend? Defend that goal. Let's turn around this way, gentlemen. Are they going to kick? Now, that would be amazing. They won the toss, clearly, but I think they have deferred. All right, gentlemen, let's go and get this back to kick off. I guess they want the ball in the second half to start, and that's an interesting maneuver by Eric Russell, the head coach of Georgia Southern. Well, maybe not so surprising when you remember what they did last year when they were behind at the yeah. half and they came out, and their offense really is so strong and so intimidating, maybe they feel they'd be better off in the second half. What a remarkable job he has done. You know, he came in his first year, and they had to get the football at Kmart, <laughs> and they had no no equipment they borrowed some from Vince Dooley his friend at Georgia a little from Ole Miss and then had to take on uh, semi-pro teams in essence the first couple of uh, games in uh, the 1981 season and there is Larry Lacewell the mentor at Arkansas State there you see his record a little deceiving when you consider the success he's had in the last three seasons Takes a while to build a program, but you can always tell the great coaches and the great teams, they wind up in championship games, and two of the best here today. Tracy Ham had a big night this time a year ago for the title. Trailing Furman 21 to 6 at the half of last year's championship game, Tracy Ham and Georgia Southern found their title hopes slipping away. But Ham ignited the Eagles early with his 24-yard scoring strike to Monty Sharp. Georgia Southern has found new life. On their next possession, Ham found Frankie Johnson. At the end of three quarters, the score was tied at 28. Despite getting his team the lead, Ham once again found himself behind with little time left in the game. Third and ten for Georgia Southern. Ham, Frankie Johnson. Frankie Johnson on the quick post pattern. And with ten seconds to go, Tracy Ham throws another bullet. And what a catch by Johnson. 
and the opening kick from Georgia Southern is taken in by Michael Adams. And Adams is up beyond the 25 to the 28-yard line. David Hodge made the stop. The Arkansas State offense is anchored by Dwayne Brown, an all-purpose athlete in every facet of the game. And he's got some pretty good numbers throwing the ball as well. And he's got a good offense to go along with him, Kevin. He sure does. These guys can really do it. Brown, Kimball's the backup. We'll have to watch him. Whitehead is a speedster. And the rest of these guys can really go. Francis, an excellent receiver. On the offensive line, Walton is subbing for Randy Barnhill. We'll have to watch him. Barnhill, an All-American, will not start the game. Out of the wishbone, Kimball the up back. And a long count here at the outset. The fake and the pitch is outside to Boris Whiteside to the 33-yard line, and Robert Underwood made the tackle from the linebacking position on the right side for Georgia Southern defensively. Well, the defensive units had a rough time. The defensive line, we talked about Boone and Allen. Hull and Eves will have to have big games, too, tonight. The line is important. Underwood's the best of the linebackers. Durham is out of position, usually a safety. They've got him at linebacker because of injuries. Aiken's a gambler. Young's the best. Bowen's a hitter. They can play, but they've got to keep from scoring points tonight. Second down and six now for the Indians. And a fumble, and it's recovered by Georgia Southern at the 30. They've got it. Major problems on the exchange that time between Brown and Kimball. Donnie Allen made the recovery for Georgia Southern. Big key in this game, we talked about it, was Kimball subbing for the injured Jemison. Watch this. A little bit of timing problem. Kimball gets there just a little too quick. Not used to having the quarterback pull the ball out of his stomach. They drop it. Georgia Southern has the ball. First down, 10 yards to go for Irk Russell's club, and Donnie Allen, a happy man on the sidelines for Georgia Southern. The lone setback is Harris. And what is, in essence, a mini run and shoot? Harris for five, and it's second down and five yards to go for the Eagle offense. Offense for Georgia Southern, well, they can really do it. Over 50 points a game in the playoffs. Ham is the leader. Harris and Harris were over 100 last week. Barton's a receiver. Belcher and Sharp, excellent receivers in the wide side. Now, the middle of this line, Cochran, Franklin, and Ganey will have to play well. They have to run inside. Stokes is a great player, maybe a pro prospect. And Ganey has moved up with the loss of James Carter, and we'll talk further about the loss of Carter when we have an opportunity and right off the left side again for four is gerald harris the arkansas state defense nationally ranked what a challenge here having the ball turned over in their own territory frederick we spoke about him barnes and ledbetter good players not great nellum honorable mention all american two years these guys are workmanlike players not real fast the inside linebackers defensive secondary a great one. Elbert Shelley, the only player that isn't non-conference, uh, all-conference on that unit. Third down, a yard to go for Georgia Southern. Out of the power eye, Ham will keep it. This is where you want him if you're Georgia Southern, but a nice stop coming up from the strong safety position, Elbert Shelley, the man that you mentioned at the top of our show was so pivotal to the Arkansas State defense. And I don't think the people at home realize what a great play that was by Elbert Shelley. That was a power eye, and Tracy took the ball outside with all that speed. Shelley ran him down and held him short of a first down. They had a yard to go, and they didn't get it. Fourth down and inches now for Georgia Southern. And you know they're going to go for it. They do have a quality field goal kicker in Tim Foley, but in this offense... Uh, they would be embarrassed if they couldn't get the first down. Oh, they remarked it and did call it a first down. And the option pitch outside to Ricky Harris is good for a first down and then some. Inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. Well, you have to go back to the first part of the first drive. They ran well inside. They were giving state problems, so they fake it inside. They come outside. Remember, a lot of these guys run for 100 yards every week. Nobody out there for state. It's another first down. And when they're inside the 20, Georgia Southern... They score, and they score a lot. 55 straight times they've scored when they're inside the opponent's 20. They mark the ball at the 12, first down and 10. Holding on to it is Tracy Ham. 
looked as though for a moment it would be that trap play, but it never really occurred. Charlie Frederick made the stop after the loss of a yard. Frederick, a great player, but Adam Blitz here, Anthony Withers, you'll see him to the left of your screen, 47 coming. Frederick does a great job of keeping his feet and staying in the lane. No place for Tracy to run, they stop him. That's great play and a good call with Withers on the blitz. Arkansas State has called a timeout with 12.27 left in the first quarter and Georgia Southern inside the Arkansas State 15. Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley, you mentioned this statistic moments ago, and it's even more remarkable when you see it graphically. A couple of field goals in there, but you're right. That, that is maybe the most incredible statistic I've ever seen in college football. There's Eric Russell. He's a defensive coach. Imagine if he was an offensive coach, they'd score every time. He's added to that genius uh, in Georgia. That staple that goes with his career. Second down and 10 at the 12. Ham to Sharp. Monty Sharp inside the five-yard line. Albert Shelley was right there with him. A gain of seven, third down and three from the five coming up. This is a tough call for a team like this, and there you saw the brilliance of Tracy Ham and some of the supporting cast. Ham to Sharp. Sharp's the leading receiver. They do have great skill people, and that was what Irk said. Irk said our skill people are unbelievable for a new program, and they really carry a lot of the load. Usually you need the linemen. This team really relies on those little guys on the outside. Pretty conservative uh, game against Nevada Reno for Ham. 8 of 16, a couple of touchdowns, but no picks. Third down. And they won't get in this time from the 20. They may have to settle for three. Dan Miller... There to make the stop. Okay, Ham had nowhere to go. Excuse me, Tim. The read on this is if a Ham's dropped straight back, it's a quarterback draw. He never drops straight back. He's a rollout passer. They read it. Watch Dan Miller, number 99, sitting right there waiting head-to-head. -head, the only way you're going to get this guy. Tim Foley in for the field goal try. They'll mark it squarely on the 10. It will be a 20-yard attempt. Straight yep. Just adding to the statistical edge, Georgia Southern with the lead. After a 20-yard field goal, Georgia Southern has a 3-0 lead against Arkansas State. Almost four minutes have elapsed, and Rob Witten will kick off for the Eagles. Michael Adams in single safety. Adams at his one. Nice maneuver outside, and he negotiates to the 29-yard line where Whitney was in on the stop. Go back to the last series. That was a pretty good job by the state defense. A high-powered offense like this, giving up the ball in their own territory, holding them to a field goal. An excellent job. The scoring drive, a short one because of the fumble. Seven plays, 35 yards, only a minute 33 off the clock. And the Foley field goal, the senior from Miami, to give his club a 3-0 lead. And he also has outstanding range. Arkansas State with Brown at quarterback out of the wishbone. Kimball will get it for not a senior. About a yard, if that. But they go right back to Kimball. Kimball fumbled his first possession, uh, the first time he was handed the ball last week. Did it again this week in the first series, and yet they go right back to him. And I think that's Richard the mark Kimball of a coach who knows what he's doing. Such Get that kid the ball, let him hold on to it. You're going to have to play with him most of the game with Jemison Hurt. You notice Arkansas State will not go with a huddle, the conventional huddle, but they use all of their time. We'll explain the reason for that in a moment. It's second down and eight yards to go. The fake to Kimball and Brown on the option to Whiteside. He inadvertently steps out of bounds at the 33. Danny Durham knocked him out of bounds, but really Whiteside did most of the damage there to that offense on that particular play. Boris has started for two years. He needs to be smarter than this. He has a better view than the quarterback, and he needs to, he needs to know where he is on the field. He has no idea. See, he's looking upfield. He's well out of bounds. He needs to turn upfield while he's in bounds. You can get you get more yards that way. Larry Lacewell relies on Brown to make reads at the line and audibleize without the benefit of a huddle. And on third down, he'll throw, and it's nearly intercepted. Nay, 
Young, the junior from Savannah, was the closest to it. Uh, remember, this is a team that only averages 91 yards a game passing, and their quarterback, Dwayne Brown, you see him there, is only five foot nine. Now, five foot nine really adds up. This is not a passing team. They're in a passing situation. Dwayne expecting something to happen that doesn't. His receiver actually stopped. And the ball was thrown high anyway, so it just looks as if there's nobody there. That's not a good play. Not a confidence builder for State. Steve Sampson to put it away. He gets good hang time with an average of 39 yards. That went a bit low, and the fair catch is called. I thought he raised his hand at the 33-yard line. Tony Belzer, though, took it up to the 38. It appeared that that right arm had gone up, but perhaps not. First down and 10 yards to go with the ball at the 38-yard line. Take a look at this. I think you'll notice the right arm did come up. Up. Oh. That's a reflex yeah. action. We call that a reflex action, Tim. Was, hit him anyway. Yeah, it was close. Yeah. Season's greetings That's from it. the Puget Sound. Suit this guy up with the beard. <laughs> At the 38-yard line, first and 10 for the ham bone, and there goes the ham beyond the 50 to the 49-yard line of Arkansas State. Anthony Withers made the tackle, the strong side linebacker. No other college football player has ever passed for 5,700 yards and rushed for 3,200. Tracy Ham's done it, and this is why. Now watch this guy work. Watch him cut back. There it is right there, number eight. Watch the official getting away. The official cost him a touchdown. Had to turn the official turned him back upfield into the defense, and that's why he didn't get a lot more yardage. They better stop that guy. A little more than five minutes gone in the opening quarter. Ham keeps it again, and he's all the way to the 39 of Arkansas State for another first down. Or very close to it. Dan Palmer, the weekend, and on the stop. Look at those numbers against Nevada Reno rushing the ball. We already told you he did not throw an interception. It was 8 of 16 in the air. Just a, a, a simple day's work and for Tracy Hamm. You have to Ham. remember, Tim and I talked about this before the game, those 26 rushes, including sacks, and he was sacked a couple of times behind the line of scrimmage. So his average, which is over six yards, includes when he didn't run the ball, when he dropped back the pass. He's a remarkable athlete. First and 10, Ham with the play action. Belzer at the 23. Could not slip away from Vincent Barnett, the free safety. It's another first down for the Eagles. He's just so quick. He has so such great reflexes. Number eight, little spin move. Is he coming down the line? He pulls back. No chance for the defense. Belzer's wide open down here and almost gets away. Great athletes on the outside, too. Now, these two receivers, Belzer and Sharp, are really quick, and they catch the ball. Rather than slot backs, the terminology is A back for the two men you see in tight, nestled to the tackles on either side in the hand bone. And up the middle is Harris. He gets perhaps for Charlie Frederick, the nose tackle there, to stop him. Good play by the line. Now, the line we felt maybe that Arkansas State could be, could be beaten if you trap him. Now, watch Ganey, the right guard, come across. Boom. Little clip there, block. On number 69, not a literal clip, but he clips him with his shoulder. And down the road we go with Harris. This is a very potent team, and they're inside the 20 again. And you know what that means. Second down and three. That usually means uh, at least points. And there's Harris. He may have the first down. He'll be very close to it. Anthony Withers, the strong side linebacker, again there to make the stop. Withers, a very smart individual, and... He'll have to play with all the intelligence he has within him to stop the likes of Harris and, uh, and Ham. He's the governor of Boys State, which in Arkansas and a number of states is uh, an honor. He may have a political future. I'd say, well, well Tracy Ham's the mayor of Statesboro. Honorary <laughs> member. They just named him mayor of Statesboro, and uh, I'll tell you, he's got, he's got about everything. And in the state where Vince Dooley was rumored to be a senatorial candidate, Irk Russell may be the... Uh, the governor in a few years if he gets some support from some politicians in Georgia with a job he's done with a school that did not have a program until the year 1981. It is a first down after the measurement and there they are again at the 12 with a first and 10.
Belzer is the A back nearest you at the lower portion of your screen. And here's the pitch. And that is Ricky Harris, the tailback to the five. Dan Miller there to make the stop, the middle linebacker. Well, they're doing it all now. They've run it inside. They ran it inside with Harris, and Tracy Ham's done his thing on the ground. They've thrown the ball, and now they're pitching it for yardage. Arkansas State, from a defensive point of view, you have to stop something. They haven't stopped anything yet. They're going to have to put a stop to one of these plays, outside, inside, or the pass, but they have no defense. Larry Lacewell must be concerned at this point as the double tight end look comes in. Offensive linemen that have new jerseys just for this series. Lonnie Bradley and Mike Wagner in the game with the ball inside the 10. And Harris hammers his way to the three. A bevy of tacklers there for Arkansas State. Charlie Frederick among those. Nice job by Charles Cochran and Franklin and Ganey in the middle. That's the strength of their line, even though the best offensive lineman is Stokes, the, uh, the right tackle. They've got a guy, this guy, Ronald Warnock. He's 5'9", 215 pounds. He's playing left tackle right where they ran there. Now, can you imagine a 215-pound tackle? They've got one. They say he's a good player. And you have to have a lot of technique, I guess, on your side when you're that small at 215. A lot of technique. About 5'9", 215 pounds worth of technique. Second down and four. They can get the first down without the touchdown. Harris over the top to about the one. Should have the first down, and he does at about the one-yard line. Find out why Gerald has so many touchdowns. He just jumped about five feet off the ground. The Swainsboro Bush Hog, as called by Eric Russell. He's from Swainsboro, Georgia. He's a tough guy, and that's the way Eric Russell likes them. They've got a lot of nicknames. It's a very close-knit bunch, as you would imagine. Uh, Georgia Southern's been together for five years, most of these kids, and, and uh, they're the only team they've ever had at Georgia Southern. The young kids who came in first, they're all seniors now. Larry Boone, the offensive lineman, the up back. Harris, touchdown. Gerald Harris gets the first touchdown of the game. It's 9 nothing, And the fans from Statesboro love it here. That's touchdown number 18 for Gerald. And he did exactly what you want him to do. He jumped. If you're playing defense, you want him to jump. Now watch him follow his blocking. And what a hit. But the ball's over the line. And the extra point is good. And there's a timeout on the field with just over six minutes left. Harris and company have a 10 nothing lead. Eagles lead 10 to nothing on the basis of this touchdown through the air by Gerald Harris. Did he get in? Right there. Ball's over the line. He's in. Touchdown. And Witten will kick off for Georgia Southern. There again. Back deep is Michael Adams, the speedster for Arkansas State. It's been an outstanding start for the defending champions. Adams fumbles it at his five. Gets it back and fumbles it again, and he's down at about the two. He was in trouble right from the beginning there. Taz Dixon made the effort to get on top of him. He dodged a bullet and then dodged it again. Well, what you never do, you never go back to catch a kickoff. The man in front of him was coming back, and I see right there, and I think he distracted him. Adams drops the ball. That was Gerald Patterson coming back, and now it's chaos. You never go back. If you're in the wedge or the short man, you never go back for a kickoff. Your deep men aren't expecting it. Not entirely Adams' fault. They mark the ball at the three-yard line, and if things weren't already bad enough for Arkansas State after a bad break on their opening possession, now they're on their patio operating against Georgia Southern, and here goes Jemison. He had a 77-yarder last week, and he's up to the 20-yard line there. I beg your pardon, two weeks ago in the win against Delaware before being injured. It's a first down. Big splits in the line, and what a lift for Arkansas State here. Jemison injured, comes in, and right away he rips off a big one. How's his knee? Looks pretty good to me. That's a big run. They really needed to get out of that territory, and we've got offsides as Jemison takes off again. He ran over his blocker that time, Fred Barnett. 
at the 35-yard line, but as we mentioned, markers down. Young and Bowen made the stop. Well, I gotta believe, I gotta believe that was encroachment by the defense and Barnett, Barnett went to sleep. Yeah, it's gonna be the defense. Barnett went to sleep out there, cost him another 10 yards. Uh, either get out of the way or make a block. Number 17 got That's right in the way of Jemison. Decline. How about Jemison? First two down. plays, two first downs from the shadow of his own goal line. Thomas Porter, who had an injured ankle coming into tonight's game, the linebacker, a very tall youngster and mobile, is now in the game for Georgia Southern, number 10 in white. That could help them down the road. It's 10 to nothing with 5.33 left in the first quarter. Jemison is in, and so far he's made his time count. Morris Whiteside. They're in a hurry were both Brad Bowen and Nay Young. Bowen is playing that position, the true safety position, the lone safety position because of that rover utilization that Eric Russell likes so much that became famous with his junkyard dog defense. He's a pretty good athlete. He's a great, yeah, better be a good athlete. You know, you got to remember it's an eight-man line with a three deep, and for Bowen to commit and come up and make a tackle for a yard gain, he's got to be sure it's not the pass. It's a great read by Bowen getting up there. Second down and nine. Brown, and he's got Barnett. First down, Arkansas State. And a nice catch by Barnett. Better as a receiver than as a blocker, obviously. Yeah. Well, what a catch by Barnett. That ball was a rocket by Dwayne Brown. Remember, just 5'9", takes a while to set up, but then watch this thing right at you. And look at this catch. This is slow motion. That ball, that's a great catch by Barnett. Enough presence of mind to run it, over, run it up for a first down. At the 47-yard line, first and 10, the counter play. Trap going to white side. He's got big yardage to the 25-yard line before Nay Young could corral him. And the Indian offense is untracked, Kevin. Got to watch out for that wishbone and the big splits in the line. Now, when you get big splits, if you're going to line up, nose up on these guys, look at how they spread it out. And then a good reaction by Georgia Southern's defense, but they're going in the wrong direction. Whiteside on the counter off a wishbone is tough. And now he's looking for somebody to hit downfield. Arkansas State on the move. From the 25-yard line, Jemison. Inside the 20 to the 18, Robert Underwood. Recovering really from knee surgery in the year 1984 as the leading tackler for the club making the stop. He missed his first game of his career last week, and yet Arkansas State got the victory against a quality, quality team from Kentucky. Jemison's important part of this team. Jemison again to the 15, close to the first down. Donnie Allen. And Flint Matthews were both there, and it will be a first down for Arkansas State. Remember, we spoke about the two inside players, Boone and Allen. Allen, number 61, is going to get down the line. That's him right there on the right leg of Jemison. Now, remember what we talked about, this defense. It's a 6-0 defense. If those defensive guards, those two inside tackles, Larry Lacewell knows it, and so does Irk know it. If they don't do the job, and Jemison runs wild, and the whole offense will go, and that's what's been going on in this drive. Get as far as just coming to the game at right halfback for Arkansas State. They like to run wide with him. The option play, Brown will pitch it to Boris White side for the touchdown. Big touchdown, and what they did on this play was they split their tackles way out, Georgia Southern, and then they drove them down inside. Too many people get caught inside. Here we go here. Durham has to take somebody. He doesn't get anybody. Look at the block by Barnell. You missed it right there. On the corner was what sprung Whiteside into the end, so that's a perfect play on a wishbone and a touchdown. Scott Roper for the extra point. And we have gotten what we thought here in the Division I AA Championship. Plenty of offense and a 10-7 score. Job pinning Georgia Southern inside the 20-yard line. Well, you know, Division uh, one AA, one of the problems is they don't have a whole lot of depth. It's probably an inadvertent face mask. I'll take a guess here. 
We have face bath. At least it got them beyond yeah. the 23 yard line. First down. What was I going to say about depth? And, and a lot of times it'll show up on the special team. Scoring drive, eight plays, 97 yards. And Jemison really got the thing going, but he didn't score. That's Whiteside. Jemison, remember, from the shot of his own goal with those two big runs to get him rolling. First down and 10 for the Eagles. The ham bone is at work again. Gerald Harris beyond the 25 to the 27 yard line. Anthony Withers along with Charlie Frederick polishing up on Harris. Frederick 6'2", 240, head of the show. We talked about him, number 70. See how he protects his legs, gets down the line, makes him cut inside, falls over his own player, did Harris, and Frederick had a lot to do with that. If you don't have to double-team a middle guard, your offense will go, but if a middle guard's good enough and you have to double-team him, he'll create a lot of problems. They need six for the first down. Ham wants to throw. And it's incomplete. Sharp coming back for the ball at the 38-yard line. Michael Adams, the cornerback, there to make the stop. Fred Barnes giving a lot of difficulty to that man, Tracy Ham. One of the concerns that they had, the Eagles, the coaching staff, was their offensive line. They felt that they could be overpowered. It was possible that the Arkansas State defense, led by this man, Coach uh, Lacewell, could overpower their line. As the night goes on, that height and weight advantage for Arkansas State could take its toll on the offensive line for the Eagles. He got the quarterfinal monkey off his back and managed to make his way to Tacoma, did Lacewell. And there goes Ham for another first down beyond the 35 to the 36 yard line. That's what's so amazing about that young man. He can get outside, but then stop on a dime, turn it back, go against the grain and make it happen that way as well. You're gonna, I think you're gonna see a great block too. Now these guys really support each other. Watch number 35 when he takes off to the left of your screen. Look at the block right there. Number 35, Gerald Harris. Ham knows exactly what to do with it. No problem, picks up the first down. The thing about these guys are so close emotionally, have been together so long, it's almost like a basketball team. They know exactly where they're gonna be on any play. Harris shows you there, makes the block. First down and 10. Ham will hold on to it and get to about the 39. Don Palmer, the defensive end, the 6'1", 210-pound sophomore from Brandon, Mississippi, leading the way for Arkansas State. I've always felt that the, the better coached a defense is, uh, the more regimented, the, the better disciplined, the more trouble they'll have with a guy like Ham because you read your keys, you do everything you're supposed to do, and next thing you know, this guy's flying around the field throwing passes over his head and running 60 yards. He could create enormous problems for you. Second down and eight for Tracy Ham and company. We'll play action. Now Nellums gets in his way. He gets away from him and finds Sharp to the 40-yard line of Arkansas State. Monty Sharp. Albert Shelley and Vincent Barnett, the two safeties, were there to get him. That was great protection by the offensive line for Ham. Sharp was wide open all the time, but the key to this play is, watch Ham. Nellums is shot, can't get to it. This is a bullet, 35 yards downfield in the chest to Sharp, and Sharp had been open for about five counts. Tracy found him finally. Good offense there. Very, very, just kind of rolling around, tossing the ball around. Belzer and Harris are the A-backs, and there goes Harris off the right side for five yards. You know what's coming with this offense, but can you stop it? Well, you, you know what they say. They, they said that probably the worst thing you can do or, or the worst thing you can do from a defensive standpoint is cover the receivers of Georgia Southern because if he's got no place to throw it, he's going to take off. That's what Lacewell said yesterday. And think about that coming from a defensive coach. The better we play, the more trouble we're in. After a gain of five, which is uh, usually what happens on four, first down when you give it to Gerald Harris, it's second and five for Georgia Southern. Cam on the option. Jitterbugs to the 30 for another near first down. He may be a half yard short. And Eric Russell has seen his team come through here in the first quarter. As we near the end of the first quarter with Tracy Ham's club leading by a count of 10 to 7. You know, Russell, many thought, would be the next head coach at Georgia when Vince Dooley stepped down. This was really a risk for Russell to take a job like this. 
but he's made it happen, and his club leads by three at the end of one quarter. From the top of the Tacoma Dome to the field of play where the national championship of Division One AA will be decided, Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley. Please that you join us late in the East, prime time in the West for what is a prime time performance by two quality institutions in Division One AA. Georgia Southern leading by three. And it's first down and 10 for Tracy Ham at the 30. Up the middle goes Harris. To the 16-yard line, Don Palmer finally corralled him, but only after another 13 yards plus were picked up. We told you about the offensive line for the Eagles, the inside, the three players, the guards and the center, doing a great job. Now watch these three guys. Him turn them right there. Dennis Franklin turns them, and Harris, big hole for Harris, who doesn't need a big hole once he's in the secondary. Great balance and strength. If they can do that against State's defense, they're going to have a big night. At the 17-yard line, first and 10, Harris. Well, he really nearly got away. I'll tell you another thing, Tim. You know what's going on here? He, he hands him the ball at full speed. Harris reaches full speed before he gets to the quarterback. First quarter stats, total yards. This is no surprise, right? Everybody, <laughs> we're talking six, yeah. average almost 600 yards for Georgia Southern. Passing yards, that's about their average. That 10 for Arkansas State might be a problem if yeah. this game gets that out of hand. They've got to pass yeah. the ball better. That may need to change. Dwayne Brown certainly has the gun. The time of possession really on the side of Georgia Southern, but a lot of that due to the mistake made on the opening series by Arkansas State. And Ham is behind the line and in the grasp of Marvin Nellums. And that will bring up a third down and perhaps a passing situation, but you hate to say that with a team like Georgia Southern and with a quarterback like Gracie Ham at the helm. Yeah, he, the thing about him is he is an excellent passing quarterback, but he throws the ball long. And, uh, he, you know, when you throw it from here a short distance, that can be a problem. If the defense, if the secondary gets their hands up, you can't really throw it over the secondary or you'll throw it out of the end zone. So you got to be careful here. Third and six. Getting a hand on that was Clint Ledbetter, the right tackle. And you mentioned he throws the ball low, and it really came to fruition there. And Ledbetter from Fort Smith, Arkansas, the big senior at 6'2", got that big paw up there. We call him an overachiever. Very smart, Ledbetter, and he uses it here. He reads the eyes, gets that paw up there. He's a big one. 6'2", 230, trying to get that little screen out to Harris. No way, and we're looking at another field goal. Tim Foley. From again the 20 yard line that market right there in the middle of the field it's a 30 yard boot he gets plenty of height and it's true so Georgia Southern has now taken a 13 to 7 lead in the opening moments of the second quarter from Tacoma live college football far from over on ESPN coming up on December the 30th the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl Iowa Hayden Fries Club out of the Big Ten against San Diego State. Denny Stoltz's club finally wrestled away the WAC championship from BYU after 10 years as champions. San Diego State and Iowa coming up 8 p.m. Eastern time on December 30th. Rob Witten will kick off for Georgia Southern. And the Eagles lead it 13 to 7. A high short boot. And Horton, the upback, a reserve quarterback, is stopped at the 27-yard line. And Jeff Banks made the stop for Georgia Southern, and the scoring drive for the Eagles was typical. Yeah, this was classic uh, Georgia Southern. 12 plays, 77 yards, but a field goal. And uh, uh, that's two field goals. Able to stop them when they get, I don't know if they were inside the 20. Were they in? Yeah, yeah they, they were. were. And they didn't score. Oh, they did score. That's right. How many is that? They got 50. the three. That's 27 now. It's 58. Oh, that's right. 58 inside. Yeah. 27, I think, is in first quarter play only. <laughs> I tell you, the numbers that they've put up are just astronomical. That's Forrest beyond the 30 to the 35 yard Chris line. Harris. Dennis Forrest, the right half back with his first carry. Brad Bowen made the stop, but a healthy gain for Forrest. Yeah, Forrest, little counter now, little counter, very tough to stop against the wishbone. It's something that uh, if you're playing defense, will drive you crazy here. Good turnout block, 
Center does his job. You get the defense overrunning the thing. And he's into the backfield. Second down and three. Horace Whiteside stopped in his tracks. And it's Larry Boone, the defensive guard on the left side, that covered him in a hurry. 6'2", 275-pound senior Boone. They're going to a lot of counters because I think they, the linebackers are looking into the backfield. There you go, piling on over there. What they're doing, I think, is they figure that the Georgia Southern people are reading the backs, the wishbone, so what they're going to the counter is trying to get them to overstep and creating blocking angles for them. Third down and one. Brown on the option, and closing quickly was Brad Bowen. I'm pretty certain that he's short of the first down. Great play by Bowen. He read it quickly and uh, got under Brown to make the stop. And they'll be forced to punt. Tremendous job by the safety, who probably was assigned to the quarterback on the option. Brad Bowen able to get into the backfield that quickly. Big play. Pretty good defense from a team that's not supposed to have a really great defense. Sampson to punt it away to Belzer. Belzer is at about his 20-yard line, awaiting the punt. A long line driver, Belzer, should have some room, but it closes in a hurry. The Arkansas State defense closes quickly. A 43-yard punt. Belzer stops, and Ken Kenneth Reed made the stop. Tracy Ham, 52% of his possessions this year. Now, how many people could ever say they were close to that? And any division. There's another one, too, that 56% of third down conversions. They say, well, you get 33 to 40%. Not these guys. This guy can play in any league, says Eric Russell, and you can understand why. Many teams, Division I teams, recruited him, but not as a quarterback. And that's what he wanted to play. First and 10. Cam to the 25-yard line. Fred Barnes, the left tackle, there to make the stop for Arkansas State. Four minutes gone in the second quarter, and his club is leading by six. <laughs> now, how many people have done that or ever will do that in college football? He could end his career, Kevin, with nearly 10,000 total yards out there. No one's even close. No. No one's even close to those numbers. The passing and the running combination is amazing. From High Springs, Florida, Tracy Ham. He has carved a niche of history at Georgia Southern. Nice pass over the middle and wide open is Harris. Ricky Harris, the tailback, finally stopped at the 35-yard line. Michael Adams, the cornerback, finally caught up with Harris. Impossible play to cover for a team that runs as well as Georgia Southern. Look at the play action. They've been killing him up the middle. And watch the backside. He looks him away. And the post pattern to Ricky Harris coming out of that slot position on the left side. Nobody even near him. 37 yards on the play. The ball outside the 35-yard line of Arkansas State. And the Eagles leading by six with 10 minutes left in the first half. And the other Harris gets it this time. And the bulldozer is inside the 20 to the 19. Michael Adams made the stop. He's got that... And it sounds trite and cliche-ridden, but he does have that low center of gravity, and he makes good use of that. That's a push hog and a half there, yep. isn't it? Offensive line doing a nice job. Watch the center, Franklin, number 76, turning Frederick. But this is the key. Harris gets to the line of scrimmage so fast, and look at the balance and the strength. 5'9", 200 is a big guy. He's not tall, but he's big, and he does have a low center of gravity. The ball at the 19-yard line. And Gerald Harris gets it again for short yardage. We understand we're experiencing some audio difficulty with our transmission. We're hopeful to have ironed that out. And we're working diligently where that's concerned. We apologize for it for the moment. Second down and seven yards coming up Harris. for Georgia Southern. Spoke about Harris in the open. 56 yards a game, regular season. Comes into postseason. He's got 10 touchdowns, 11 now after the one he had before, and he's rushing for 126 yards a game. The guy plays is a money player. Ham looking for Sharp, and he's got him at the 10. A marker down. Withers was in coverage for Arkansas State, along with Palmer, who dropped off from his end position to cover. 
The flag was thrown at the point of the reception. An ineligible receiver, is that yeah. what that is? Had an ineligible receiver downfield, which is a little bit either. That's a very costly penalty. I can't understand. Tracy's even going over to talk with the official on the play. Now there I think what uh, I think what they've called is our wide receivers line up, and if both our wide receivers line up on the line of scrimmage, they're both ends. And the inside receiver that time was Monty Sharp. Now, oftentimes, we'll move them up and back, but if they're both up within the line of scrimmage, within the yard of the line of scrimmage, then he is an el ineligible receiver as he went down the field to catch the football. Mm -hmm. And we do move those people back and forth every we once in a while. An eligible receiver by the offense. Loss of down. Fourth down. Third down. Third down. That's very costly. So, but I think that's that's precisely what happened because it couldn't have been one of our offensive linemen downfield. Yep, that's loss of down. That brings up third down and about 12. Moving the ball back outside the 20-yard line to about the 21. As Tracy's going to go back and pass again. He's going to get out of some trouble there. Rolling over to his right. Tracy's got some running room on the right side to the 15. Tracy to the 10. Tracy to the 5. First down, Georgia Southern at the 5-yard line as Tracy makes something out of nothing one more time before Don Palmer can bring him down. Vincent Barnett also went on the stop. They're going to mark it perhaps just outside the 5-yard line at about the uh, 6, just between the 5 and the 6-yard line. Watch Tracy scramble just out of trouble. Just amazing. And he's got that good speed to get him on the outside. Michael Adams trying to get him down there, and I think it was Adams who finally made that little diving tackle in there. He might have tripped we've him got, up. We've got the bone cruncher offense in there right now with Larry Boone and Wildman Carter in at the at the halfback spots. Wildman Carter, a freshman out of Valdosta. What do they have a good program? There goes Gerald Harris straight up the middle, and boy, has he got some power. As he gets inside the five near the three-yard line and just keeps those legs moving. This is just kind of piling Fanny's football. Just everybody jumps up in the pile <laughs> when you get down here. Just push them back. They're trying to penetrate. We're trying to push them back. Backs are trying to jump over top of everybody. It'll be second down and goal from about the just outside the three yard line is where the football is spotted or right between the three and the four. Eight minutes and 12 seconds to go in the half. Georgia Southern up 13 to seven. As you watch Eric Russell on the sidelines praying that they get this one in. Georgia Southern really needs a touchdown. You saw how explosive Arkansas State was. And there goes Gerald Harris getting the football, and he gets away after a couple of guys. I sure don't like that penalty flag. I That's don't right in the middle where either. they call holding. And that's two, what could be very costly penalties here. Illegal procedure against Georgia Southern. Not as bad as it could have been. No have to get the uh, open field team back out on the field. Get the bone crushers out of there. So you see the big guys coming off and the more svelte guys coming in. We say 7.55 to go. I can't stop them from out here. Foul. Procedure by the offense before the snap. Repeat second down. So it'll now be second and goal from the eight and a half. This is a tough situation because we haven't really seen that much of the goal line defense down here and we're going to have to rely on what we think they're going to be doing. Tracy Ham brings him up. He's got Gerald Harris behind him and Herman Barron His in motion covers. to the left. Tracy going to try the quarterback draw and he's going to get stacked up for practically no gain. Clint Ledbetter had him. We've got to come out of here with a touchdown. Really need something at this point. Seven and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. 13 to 7 Georgia Southern. We anticipated a man coverage there and and they really weren't in man coverage. If and Tracy was going to come out here and pitch it to Gerald Harris down the sideline if they're man coverage then we take their 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 uh, corner coverage away from by running the, running the receiver into the back of the end zone. Splitting wide to the left. Tony Belzer, Gerald Harris the setback. And Tracy decides he's going to call a timeout. He didn't like what he saw. And with a timeout on the call. field there are seven minutes and one second to play in the second half. Georgia Southern's up by a score of 13 to 7. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the great Pacific Northwest, Tacoma, Washington. We're glad to be here. Bill Edwards along with Bucky Wagner. Seven minutes, one second to go. It's third down and goal for Georgia Southern at about the eight-yard line. And in motion to the right is Delano Little. 
And Tracy Ham going back there he to is, pass. There he is. No, Tracy. Tracy's going to fire right over the middle, and it's knocked down as Delano got open momentarily. But Tracy the, just saw him late. He was open early, he was open early, and Tracy, by the time Tracy reacted to it, so did the, did the defense. Michael Adams had come back, and Delano Little was wide open. If you watch Tracy, he's looking over there to his right. Cannot see, I believe, over Dan Miller in there. And Michael Adams came over and just made a beautiful play. And Tim Foley's going to try to make the score 16 to 7. As the hold is down and the kick is up, and it is good. But it's Pat Parker who was holding this time instead of Monty Sharp. And there's going to be timeout on the field. Six minutes and 53 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern is up by a score of 16 to 7. We'll be back in Tacoma, Washington, right after we pause for this. Back at Tacoma, Washington, the score is 16 to 7 in favor of Georgia Southern. We've got just under seven minutes to play in the first half of this one. Deep to receive, Rob Witten's kickoff is Earl Easley. Witten, a bad one last time. This one almost similar. Goes way up and not very deep as it's going to be taken there by Ricky Kimball. And Ricky's going to get up to the 35-yard line across to the 36. And so the defense is going to be defending about a 70-yard field here. David Hodge, the linebacker. And Taz Dixon in there as well. According to the PA announcer, we saw David Hodge first, okay? So Georgia Southern goes 77 yards in nine plays, but they can't convert into a touchdown. Tim Foley from Miami comes in to kick the field goal. Five minutes and 22 seconds consumed on the clock, and Georgia Southern's had the football just about all night, maybe with the exception of about four or five minutes, and the give is going to go inside to Jemison. Well, that's just too much, Bill. We've got to stop that fullback before he can make four yards. Brad Bowen's the guy who brings him down. And Jemison's going to get about five yards on the play. It's going to be second down and five. Their offensive line is doing an awfully good job again. These the guys are ranked number one in the country. And they run an excellent wishbone as the give is going to go to Jemison again. And he's going to get very close to first down yardage as he gets about four yards anyway. He's finally stopped at the five yard line, 45 yard line, I should say, by Edward Eaves. Clinton Matthews had a shot at him, but missed him there. Let's hope we can have another great third down play. Six minutes to go in the first half. Georgia Southern up 16 to 7. If they do anything but give it to Jamison, they should not make it. <laughs> is Jamison how he pronounces it? It's J-E-M-I-S-O-N. And the give is going to go to Jamison. But boy, I want to tell you, Robert Underwood out of Statesboro came submarining in there. And that was all she wrote. As you see Flint Matthews in there and also uh, Edward Eaves. And, and that's going to bring up fourth down, another big play. That was a good defensive call. We shift defenses there in center linebacker. And Robert Underwood was able to beat the guard through that guard tackle gap and made the tackle. Robert Underwood. That was just a missed assignment on their part. Guess to kid who stayed Great home. Great defensive call. Some folks in Statesboro can really be proud of him. Flint Matthews in there from Lincolnton. And a beautiful, beautiful punt downfield is going to back Tony Belzer up. He's going to call for a fair catch at the five-yard line. It's going to be first down for Georgia Southern. And a long way to go. Five minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half as you see Tracy Ham. I think Tony Belson forgot where he was on the field, and once he passed that ten yard line, he should have let that ball go. For sure. But when you're running backwards and looking up in the air, sometimes you just don't know where you are. Larry Boone on the sideline getting some talk from Coach Russell. Also Donnie Allen. Irk's been called a defensive genius, yet he's got an offensive machine that is just out of this world. And we're going to see how well they do at this point. First and ten from the five for Georgia Southern. The give is going to go. No, Tracy's going to keep it. He's going to dance up to about the nine-yard line and pick up of about four yards on the play, where it'll be second down and six before Don Palmer out of Brandon, Mississippi, brings him down. Those Arkansas State players look awfully big. They're, our coaches feel like they're the best defense we've played against since the University of Florida. I think they're probably right. We'll hope that we can continue to move the football. We won't get any argument. We want to thank everybody for joining us on the Lewis Sports Network tonight. As we've got second down and six, Tracy Ham is going to roll to his right to pass. Fires way up the field, and he just fell down. That was intended over there for... Tony Belzer, was it? Or was it 80? No, that's, that was Darren Chandler. Darren Chandler. They had the pass open. They were in his own coverage, and 
because of Tracy, they've taken their front side linebacker now and have got him containing Tracy as a secondary contain, and that takes the linebacker out from underneath the, the curl route and leaves just the cornerback and, and the uh, and the wide receiver, and that, that route will be open. Hey, you saw what Georgia Southern had done on the four possessions that they've had the football so far. This is possession number five. If they bring it up, it's going to be third down and six. Big third down situation for GSC. We have not punted tonight so far. Belzer goes in motion to the left. Tracy looking for somebody to throw it to way upfield. It's going to be complete to Ricky Harris. Ricky Harris catches it across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Big pickup on the play and of course automatically that's first down before Greg Lee can finally stop him. That's just unbelievable. Tracy was under a lot of pressure from the end here. Look back, look the safety over to the right and threw back across to the. Look how wide open Ricky Harris yeah. is too. Or Lee can finally bring him down. Ricky Harris, the senior out of Harlan, Georgia. That was a great third down play. Georgia Southern has come up with some spectacular third down plays this season, which has gotten them here. And could be one of the reasons they might take home that second trophy. Tracy back to pass again. A beautiful pitch down there across the 45 to about the 47 yard line. Delano Little, the kid with a bruised foot. A diving catch. Shelly Elbert, they say, is going to bring him down, but actually Delano would have fallen down anyway. That diving catch that he made, but watch how beautiful this thing really that's is. Just, that's just as pretty as could be. You see, it's right between the corner, number four, and the safety coming over there. The corner is coming up to stop the option, and we just slip in behind him, and the safety can't get over from the hash mark in time to make the play. Delano Little, kid that says he might like to make a career out of broadcasting. Delano, come on up and join us next week. First and 10, Georgia Southern at the Arkansas State 45-yard line. They give to Gerald Harris straight ahead for about three yards. Ron Hillers is the guy, defensive tackle, that brings him down. You watch Gerald Harris get out of that pile. There's a kid like that Timex watch. Bucky takes a licking and keeps on ticking. <laughs> he, he takes some shots in there. He sure did a good job there. It's gonna be second down and let's call it seven. Short seven anyway. Ball just on the 41 yard line of Arkansas State. This drive started at the five. Second down seven. Tracy Ham rolling to his left, wants to pass. He's got some running room. He's going to try to get outside. He's to the 35, to the 30. Pick up of about 12 yards on the play before he's run out of bounds by Don Palmer over there on the side. Tracy, get up. Thank you. <laughs> just sheer quickness. He was out there and the man had a good shot at him in the open field. and just outran them all. Incredible. Georgia Southern is keeping the ball. Eventually, it's got to take a toll on that defense because they've had the ball, I would say, probably 15 minutes or more, or 20 minutes or more. Well, let's now. say we're going to find out where they're lined up. We'll have enough time to, to look and see where the defense <laughs> is going to be. First down for Georgia Southern on the 31. The ball just outside the 31-yard line. Dennis Franklin centering it up out of Hoganville. The give is going to go to Gerald Harris. Boy, he explodes out of that backfield of the 25-yard line. Pickup of about six yards on the play, maybe five. Be second down and five before Ron Hillers can trip him up. Just got tripped. Hillers is the guy who has come in He's here. He's coming out of there, too. He's limping Gerald just a something. little bit as he comes over on the side. Gerald, take a breather. You deserve it. Second down and five. Eric Russell going over to say something. The trainer is going to look at Gerald on the sidelines. We'll keep, him, keep you posted. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go in the half. Georgia Southern up 16 to 7. As Tracy Ham calls him off, it's going to be second down and five. Drops the football, picks it back up, and maybe makes a half a yard. Goes across the 25-yard line, where it's going to be third down and about four and a half, maybe. Another big third down play. Yep. Gary Miller is coming in. Ross Warsham was in for a moment. He comes back out. Gary Miller is the backup for Gerald Harris. Has had a good year. He's the kind of guy you like coming in to, to play for you. Big, tall kid. Got a blitz coming. Got Runs a blitz with a lot of power. All right, all right. Read the blitz perfectly. All right, all right. Just a great great play. That's the first time that they've blitzed against us all night long. We caught him in the blitz, broke the quarterback free. When you do that, there's no safety in there. The safety's up playing man-to-man. -man. There's nobody back there, and Tracy was able to do it. I don't know. We must have ESP to, 
They've got Matt Flay on against that defense. Look here. There's That's no right. safety back there. Broke it through. It's over. Beautiful block over there by Sean Ganey, a freshman. Monty Sharps back into hole. Tim Foley is going to try to make it 23 to 7. Here it comes, and it is good. Georgia Southern, 23. Arkansas State, 7. A minute 33 to play in the half. And we will be back to Tacoma, Washington, right after this. So about moving to Division I AA, and he said, you know, I did not think that it was the right move early. And I said, why? I said, well, I thought we'd get our brains beat in. But it hasn't been that way. And he credits Tracy Ham as the pivotal cog in, the, in making certain that didn't happen. Witten's kick is taken in and brought back to the 25. And bouncing off a few tacklers is Earl Easley at the 24-yard line. Terry Young made the stop. Let's watch Terry Long all the way down. Now, what you're supposed to do is you stay in your lane, stay under control. He does it. Get some position. It's a good thing he did, because he was a saver there. Keep your head about you. You break down a little bit. See where the play's going. Go and make the tackle. Nice job. Inside the 25-yard line. Dwayne Brown will throw it. And it's nearly picked off. Warnell Anthony got a hand on it. It will be second and ten. Business as usual. This time, though, they have to go the long distance. 95 yards. And Tracy Ham with another in a long, long list of touchdown runs. That was after a fair catch at the five. No wonder he caught it at the five. <laughs> they needed the yards yeah. for their records. Second down and ten. Brown, the pitch for Forrest, an errant one, and Brown picks it up on the Sunday hop at the nine-yard line. Maurice Barron is around the play, and a timeout being called by Georgia Southern with a minute four left. State coming apart just a little bit, losing their composure. Brown knows he's going to be hit. Throws it without looking. Now, you can't tell from there whether the pitch man was out of position or he just tossed it out there. Larry Lacewell's job getting a bit more difficult. His team now trails by 16. We're in the waning moments of the first half here from the Tacoma Dome. In Washington, Georgia Southern leading Arkansas State 23-7. And Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley with you. We're happy you joined us. Dwayne Brown has third down in eternity. 24 yards against anybody's defense is a long distance, particularly when you're inside your 10, as the Indians are. Forrest Whiteside takes the swing pattern and stumbles at his own 12. Wesley Lee, the backup linebacker, senior from High Springs, Florida, makes the stop, and that means Sampson will have to come in and punt it away for Arkansas State. And you know Larry Lacewell hates that because that means Ham and company get the ball with less than a minute to play, and they should have a reasonably good field position. They've called timeout. They have a timeout. The uh, Georgia Southern people called timeout. 53 seconds. It's time for four touchdowns yeah. for them. They can put another 300 yards in total offense. Up. You talked about the Arkansas State defense holding them to field goals. That last run by Ham could have been a real backbreaker for them, and they can ill afford allowing Georgia Southern into the end zone again. Well, they're completely disorganized now. Offensively, they're not getting the job done. The defense, which really did a creditable job in the first half. You're right, that was a backbreaker, that last run. That took them really out of it. Now they need three scores to get the lead. Nice high punt again by Sampson. Belzer with a fair catch out of the 48-yard line. 37-yard punt by Sampson, but he got it high enough that Belzer was forced to call the fair catch. Well, here's the problem now. You're 52 yards away, 45 seconds to go, and this is a team that can throw it in or run it in from this distance in 45 seconds. First down, you stop the clock. Uh, very dangerous. No, really nothing you can do defensively. There's nothing you can look for. They've done everything well outside, inside. They've thrown the ball. You're just going to have to pop somebody, try to knock it loose if they do complete a pass or run up the middle. First down and 10. Delano Little in motion. Ham. It's picked off, nearly picked. 
walked off. Boy, Albert Shelley had a great opportunity that time, and Ham, under duress from Marvin Nellums, threw one up for grabs. Nellums did a great job here, and this is really one of the, the first poor play for Ham. Secondary, see, look on the way top of the screen. You see Harris running loose up there. People in the middle. And there's a wobbly pass, almost picked off. Probably should have been picked off. Well, and Ham's glad that he gets that one back. They're undressing him there. That's the first time they got their hands on him. Little at the 35 and out of bounds at the 33. Delano Little, he's been a factor here. 29 seconds left, and Greg Lee was there with him defensively. Well, they got to do one or the other. They got to get pressure on him, or they've got to cover these receivers. That was not a great pass. He was just wide open, threw a bullet. He had 10 yards. Secondary was 10 yards off of Delano Little when he made that catch. State, as highly ranked as they are, they have got to produce something, either a blitz, some kind of, some kind of pressure. They're going to have to cover somebody. Foley has uh, got good range. They may need one more first down for him. Ham threw it behind Delano Little that time. He was open. Vincent Barnett and Shelley were in the general area. Big night already. 249 yards in total offense. We still have a half remaining. The numbers are unbelievable until you see this guy play. <laughs> and somehow, somehow you can you can accept it when you see him do the job. But when I first saw those numbers, having never seen him play, I could not believe that anybody could pile up numbers like that. Second down and 10. 25 seconds are left for Tracy Ham. Nellums gets through again. Ham gets away from Miller, and he's off to the races. And out of bounds at the 14. Now what can you do? Dan Miller, the linebacker, waved at him. Nellums did the same thing, and then Ham just took off. Gain of about 18 in a first down. Man never threw a pass. Watch number 80. Delano Little. Right there, number 80. He's free, but by this time, Ham has said, hey, I'm going downfield. That's what I mean. What they say, when they can do just about anything, they can pick up 35 yards in the wink of an eye, and they do. At the 14, first down, you see the time remaining. Ham has plenty of time. Incomplete. Chandler touched it at the one. Markers are down he's in the backfield. He's over the line of scrimmage, I think, when he passed that. What a pass. That was a great pass. It was just too hard. Threaded the needle. Ten seconds are left. The indication has already been given, and you're right. They'll move it back. Larry Lacewell says, let's get in here. Maybe not give up more than three and start over again in the second half. I, I talked about defense, you know, Tim. I, I said that the better you are defensively, the thing that can really mess you up is a great athlete. And Eric Russell knows he's got one in Tracy Ham, and he uses him. A guy that can do so many things. You can't the defense the guy. Pass by the offense carries loss of down, second down. That's the illegal forward pass. He was over the line of scrimmage was the problem. They lose the down, which is really not important with 10 seconds left. But that's really the key. Ham has been the key. He's just completely disorganized the Arkansas State defense. 35-yard attempt now for Foley. Boy, he has got some leg with a lot of room to spare. And six seconds left. Georgia Southern has a clean bill of health offensively. They have six possessions and six scores. Thank you. That's 62 times inside the 20. You know, I have to say something about that uh, that record. You know how they score inside the 20? Yeah. That means their field goal kicker doesn't miss inside the 20. Yeah, that's true. It means when he gets it, because a lot of these are field goals, and this guy is just he's automatic, as we've seen tonight. Well, they've lived up to their reputation. Not defensively, though. Yeah. You talk, though, about Arkansas State defensively, and they did hold them to the field goals. I look back now to that, that run by Ham on the quarterback draw. Big play. Yeah, and, and you wonder now if Arkansas State can uh, can get it all back together in the second half. You're talking about a team that also can score 55 points, as they did against Delaware, and but have rolled up big, big points themselves. But average is just 91 yards in the air. That's true. And that's, that's going to be a problem. And it will take time for them to use the wishbone, and... They'll have to hold on to the football a bit more, you got to figure, but 
perhaps uh, too much time will be taken from that clock with too many long drives. We talked about establishing the fullback, and on the one drive they did, they scored. But they have not since then or before then established the fullback, so they have not been able to get outside for the big play, and their passing game has been ineffective. Foley, who's already set a record here with four field goals in Division I AA, kicks off rather than Witten, and again, Arkansas State fumbles. And Georgia Southern has it, but it won't matter. Time has run out. Jeff Banks made the recovery. Now, Irk Russell will lobby that one second was left when Banks came up with it, and he called timeout. Larry Lacewell says, that's okay. Let's get in the locker room. Yeah, he won't be arguing. This is, a, this is something you shouldn't do here. If you can't make the catch, you got to let the thing bounce. And it, this is really a, kind of a microcosm of the whole game. Total disorganization, uh, dis disorganization for Arkansas State ending up in a benefit to Georgia Southern, but the half is over, and I'm sure State is glad it is. Eric Russell's argument has concluded. He, though I'm sure is in uh, a good mood, his club leads by 19 at halftime. It's 26 to 7. Georgia Southern leading Arkansas State. This is our possession chart, and for Georgia Southern, it looks like the billboard Hot 100 with a bullet. <laughs> Gold represents a scoring drive, blue plus yardage, and red minus yardage. But all you're going to see are goals. I mean, it is a gold rush for Georgia Southern. A field goal and a touchdown. They were really held to field goals on a couple of times, but look at the number of plays here. Long drives, 11 plays, nine plays on two occasions, six plays for another field goal towards the end. It has, this is the first time in our ESPN coverage this year that our chart has been this golden. And you can credit Tracy Ham for all of that. There he is, and the numbers that he has produced all year will match that of his first half. And Georgia Southern has a lead in so doing by a score of 26 to 7. Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley with you from the Tacoma Dome. We're happy you joined us. And Larry Lacewell has uh, some job in front of him in the second half. Yeah, you got to put a rope on that guy. I mean, he, they're, they're going to have to just, they have to do something with Ham. They got to keep him in front of him, corral him, do something, cover a couple of receivers. But like I said, at halftime, they're, they're going to have to go crazy defensively. Uh, Georgia Southern has the ball here in the second half to start to make matters worse, and they've scored on every possession. First thing they have to do is get the ball back without scoring. Eric Russell now with a bit of history in front of him in the next 30 minutes. He could be the first coach to ever lead a team to back-to-back -to -back national championships in Division I AA. This is one of those things that 20 years from now, people are going to look back and say, he started the program when and he won yeah. what? How many times? Uh, think of the emotions going through his uh, his his mind tonight. These kids. He, he, we talked to him yesterday. He said, "We I grew up with these kids." Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, "What's it going to feel like tomorrow night when your first class graduates and they leave?" And uh, obviously, when they brought you to national finals, yeah. he said, "I'm gonna go with them." <laughs> he has a number of fifth-year seniors. Many of these youngsters that came to Georgia Southern never knew they'd be in Division One AA. They came with the thought in mind that Eric Russell would have a quality program. He has done that. Funny hop, it bounced forward and was picked up by one of the up backs for Georgia Southern, and that is Keith Jeter. He gets it up to about the 23-yard line and will be first and 10 for Georgia Southern from that point. Whatever the Indians are going to do, they got to do it right now. Come out with something that confuses, and, and I think this is interesting, confuses Tracy Hammer. Not only is he an athlete, but think how smart this guy is. He doesn't get trapped. He finds the receivers. They've got to put a stop to him, and that's how you stop the offense. Not many people have done it. Gerald Harris, his fullback, has also been very productive in this game. And coming in Arkansas State, they figured they must stop Harris up the middle. They did that time. After a gain of two, Fred Barnes, the left tackle, 6'2", 245-pound sophomore in on the stop. Defensively, Arkansas State relying heavily on Frederick up front, along with Palmer, Barnes, and Ledbetter. The linebackers Wither and Withers and Miller, they've been active tonight, but they've come up with nothing but air on a couple of would-be tackles of Tracy Ham. Adams has played well at his corner position, along with Lee. And Ham will air it out. And that's Warsham. 
Ross Worsham has it for a first down at the 42. Greg Lee made the stop for Arkansas State. And Lee was just too far off the receiver. Now, these guys are in a position where they've got to make a big play. You can't give these guys a cushion. Ham's got a rifle arm. Credit also a good job done by the offensive line. Sean Ganey drawing the starting nod tonight. Normally a backup to James Carter at the right guard spot. Carter ruled ineligible for this game, and we'll explain why in a moment. Harris, nothing doing. Fred Barnes and Frederick and Legend are the interior linemen in on the stop. Sean Ganey, that right guard, doing an outstanding job tonight. Frederick, number 70, makes the plays at a rough time, protecting his legs again, taking the side, reading it, gets in front of Harris. The only way to stop these guys is to get in front of them and have some leverage. When you start overrunning them or not getting there, they're going to run right by you. You need to keep your defense in front of speed. If you can do that, slow them down. The rest of the guys can catch up. Second down and eight. Cam. Looking long. He goes for the secondary receiver, and that's Barron. Herman Barron inside the 40 of Arkansas State. Anthony Withers made the tackle. We talked about foot speed. Also, the strength of Ham's arm, I think, is really fooling Arkansas State. He gets the ball so quickly from behind the defense. Now, watch, and he's looking it off, too. He's got the defense going. Now, watch how fast he throws the ball. That's a slow motion, folks. We slowed it down. And even though you've got good coverage, he's so accurate. He throws it so hard, there's no way to judge it. From the 37, first and 10, business as usual for Georgia Southern. This drive got underway at their own 23. Harris to the 31-yard line. They mentioned Ganey playing well, the freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. He's playing in place of James Carter. Now, Carter was ruled ineligible, the starter at that position that Ganey is at tonight, because of steroid testing as done by the NCAA all the quarterfinalist teams had to go through mandatory drug testing, steroid testing, and Carter did not pass that test, though he did try for an injunction, got a lawyer, and is trying to fight that case. But he's not here tonight. Ham. Touchdown, Tracy Ham. Boy, Herman Barron threw a great block. I want you to watch the hit on the fullback at the start of this play. Arkansas State did exactly what they needed to do. Watch the handoff. Watch what happens to the fullback here. Harris. Boom. They get him. Two men get him. And now here's the problem. You stop the fullback. You've got to get out there. And that's a poor effort on the corner there. You need to do better than that on this guy. And now it's, as we said, a track meet. Tracy Ham is winning it into the end zone again and folks that's an option quarterback now Barron just got in the way of the cornerback that was all it took and him 156 yards and a couple of touchdowns we have a timeout with the score now 32 to 7 things don't look better for Larry Lacewell Tracy Ham with another touchdown run, and if the one in the first half was not the backbreaker, then perhaps that one you just saw was. Georgia Southern with a 25-point lead, and apparently they'll go for two. They don't like uh, odd digits. They'll go for <laughs> the even numbers here. Ricky Harris is in the slot to the right side, and that's little in motion to the top of your screen. Ham, he got his man Barron. The man that shielded the free safety on the touchdown run for him gets the, the deuce. And it's 34 to 7 now. If I, if I was winning a game by this much, I don't know that I would go, go for two. And the simple reason is you get these guys mad. You don't want to get a team that you've beaten to death. Look at this. He does everything, this guy. and <laughs> Another perfect pass. But what do you want to get these guys mad for? You've demoralized them. And if you get them upset by going for two, that could be, could be a problem if they get it rolling, which is not likely. Let's take a look at that touchdown again. Now from behind the offense, we showed you from behind the defense. Watch the fullback. They take care of the fullback. Now watch the speed. You've got pursuit from the back. And look at him outrun the defense. You, know, you have to come across the line of scrimmage with this guy. You cannot let him run laterally. He turns the corner too quickly, and he's gone. And State's big problem is they're not making it happen. They're sitting, and this guy is just killing them. You wonder what he'd do against different competition, but I tell you this, Irk Russell may be with the best, uh, 
the best option quarterback in college football, period. I don't know that there's a better one. And Eric said, he said, when we realized the quickness and the speed this guy had, we just let him go because we realized what we had. It's taken in by Easley again. He doesn't fumble it this time. He's up beyond the 25 to the 29. Wesley Lee made the tackle for Georgia Southern. Again, another fine, long, quick scoring drive. Seven for seven now. And guess who gets the touchdown? That's 62 straight inside the 20, right? Were they inside the 20 or were they outside? I think they were outside the 20. Does that, that count? I don't they know. were inside midfield. <laughs> and with him, that's about all it that's about all it takes. Dwayne Brown has only thrown four times. You gotta figure we'll have to go up top a bit more in the second half. Play action. Forrest on the swing pattern, and Matthews, Flint Matthews got to him quickly and markers are down an area where you would consider a, a non flagrant face mask call but we'll wait and see up oh, the indication is it may be against Arkansas State nope we were right the first time I don't know why they put that thing on there it's so easy to grab and pull him down Matthews going to the sideline gets his hand I don't know Ooh, about that yeah. one. I don't know about that one. I'd say we've talked a lot about the offense for Joy. What a job that this, this defense that we talked about. There was no defense in the game, and if there was, it would be the nationally ranked defensive state. But what a job Southern's defense has done. Ooh, Kimball is met by Matthews. In the coaching profession, they say put a hat on that kid, and uh, and that was quite a hat that Matthews issued. <laughs> Well, you know, when you have a have a lead like this, 34 to 7, it's fun to play defense. Yeah. You're relaxed. You just come. Tracy had nice guy too. We talked to him yeah. yesterday. Nice guy. I said, you know, you've done a lot for this university. He immediately said, well, they've done a lot for me too. And I guess it has been kind of a relationship with both ways. Second and three, Brown, and he has Cassie Francis for a first down at the 46-yard line of Georgia Southern. Nay Young. Pushed him out of bounds. Exactly where Arkansas State doesn't want to be in a passing situation, giving it away. Nice job by Brown, though. Southland Conference Player of the Year, right on the money to Cassie Francis. More of that. They need more of that. First down's good. They can run a pass now. We have time here. Well, Brown seems to have a pretty good arm. He'll have to load up his gun here, and he's down behind the 50 at the 49. Donnie Allen and Robert Underwood combine to bring down Brown. They've gotten a big game from those two inside guys we talked about, Allen being one of them. Now, when you roll, you're giving it away, and you can just come defensively, and that's exactly what happens here. Everybody coming. As soon as you roll, you lose that option to go back the other way. Donnie Allen picked it up, comes hard, all the way from Live Oak, and makes the sack. Second down at 15. Jumbo, a yard, maybe two. Underwood made the stop. We brought this up when we spoke at halftime. I think we should bring it up again. We only saw Jemison in one series for Arkansas State. That ironically, or perhaps not so ironically, was the when they got the touchdown. He did play in one later series. He played in another series, and he had a couple of runs. But we must remember that he, for those who just tuned in, he's a great fullback. He did have a knee injury, yeah. and it was only 90%. It's quite possible, especially with a score like this and them wanting to win, it probably was re -injured. Third and 12, it's nearly picked off. Chris Aiken, the cornerback, got in the way of Kazzy Francis. And Sampson will come in again for another punt formation for Arkansas State. Tough spot for the Indians to be in. Down by this much, not really a passing team. And a pretty good defensive job by Georgia Southern again. Sampson has had more of an opportunity to uh, punt than usual tonight, and he gets this one inside the five, and yes, down at the one-yard line. So Ham will have to cover all of the terrain when we return. So far, that, that pretty picture tells the story if you're a Georgia Southern fan. Was that one about ham and cheese? Yeah, Nellums. No, the, the Nellums. grits, yeah. <laughs> Nellums was cheese, right? They right. put the cheese on the ham. But so far, we've got just a ham sandwich, no cheese. 
First down and 10 with the ball at the one yard line for Tracy Ham. His club leading 34 to 7. The quarterback draw again beyond the five yard line. Reminds me of the old joke with the quick draw, you know, and the guy says, You want to see it again? <laughs> yeah. The guy is as quick as a guy as I've ever seen. Yeah, that play. Looking at it from our vantage point, you'd figure, well, maybe three yards, two or three. He gets five or six. He cut, he cut three times, and he ran two yards and made three cuts. Second down and five with the ball at the six. Belzer dropped it at the 12, pass a bit behind him. Tracy was the first to realize that. So impressed with him. Great block on Nellums at the corner there. Uh, these guys, the offensive line, a little bit undersized, doing the job. And uh, as much as we talk about about the quarterback of this team, a great supporting cast, uh, and really a team that's put together so well. They really do. Uh, comp uh, what's the word? Uh, compliment. They, compliment. Yeah. Thank you. Right. <laughs> uh, and that man right there. You talk about a team, a team coach. Irk Russell has been known to headbutt his team before coming out for a game and blood would be flowing from his forehead. Headbutt the helmet. Yep. Harris to about the nine yard line. And it will be fourth down and guess what? Georgia Southern will have to punt the football. This guy's leg fell asleep I bet sitting on the bench. That's Pat Parker out of Savannah Georgia. And it's hard to figure that he would have a 38 yard average. He, he obviously only gets to punt more than two or three times at practice. Pat, wake up, Pat. Oh, and that sometimes can occur when you don't have your special teams that often. And the, the deep snap from Stan Sipe was way too high, and it'll go down as a safety, and Arkansas State picks up two. Well, now you know why they score all the time, because they don't like to have these things happen. Guy'd have to be nine feet tall to get that thing. He hiked it right up here in the booth. So with eight minutes and 55 seconds left, Parker will at least get an opportunity to meet the pigskin with his toe, though. Uh, I'll tell you what, they have been offsides on every kickoff. Uh, Georgia Southern, and it hasn't been called. That's Simon. He's the loneliest guy in town right now. You only get a few opportunities for deep snapping. And that one went up top. It appears that they will punt the ball away. Parker stayed in the game as they kick it off from the 20 yard line. Uh, you got you to give a little practice, right? Well, we talk about 34 to 9 in the Tracy Ham show, but they were down last year, Georgia Southern, to Furman by not quite as much as this, but yet we're able to mount a comeback. But let's not forget they, uh, they can throw the ball. And throw the ball well. Well, you would you would think against this defense that that a defense has given up almost 30 points a game, although they have played a little better. Horton is driven all the way back to his 16. So Parker made good use of his opportunity, and he's finally dropped at the 25-yard line. Todd Horton is by Milton Gore, a reserve safety for Georgia Southern. And Arkansas State will have the ball at their 26-yard line. A beautiful punt by Parker. Remember I told you a little while ago they're offsides on every kickoff. Watch this. The official has not called it all night. And there it is. There's the 20-yard line. Watch the, the far side. See his head? See this guy right here in the center right of your screen? They've been offsides on every kickoff. It's never been called. <laughs> Boris Whiteside gets it, but uh, can find no room at all. As Warnell Anthony, senior, 5'10", 192 pounder from Reedsville, Georgia, forced him out of bounds. Well, of course, the thing about a wishbone offense, and it's true whether you're playing in the Division One AA or any division, you don't want to get behind with a wishbone offense. It's, uh, it really does impair you because you got the three backs in the backfield. They don't get out quick on pass patterns that hurt your passing game. Second and 11 for Dwayne Brown. And it's dropped by Forrest. That's a good call there. Real good call. Uh, they didn't, they just didn't execute. The other thing about it is the way that Brown sets up the pass. It takes a very long time. 
And uh, there's just nothing, nothing this man can do. He's, they're out quick enough, and uh, you can't coach that. If a team is too quick for you, there's not much you can do. If you're, if you're close in the game, you've got a shot, but this game's 34-9, to nine, and, and there's really not much you can do, especially if his guys are, are dropping the ball. And you know he doesn't have a slow team, not to the standards of Division I AA, but then again, how many times do you play Georgia Southern? Brown intercepted by Milton Gore. First interception of the game, Gore out of North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Well, one of the problems here, you see Larry scratch his head, is they're trying to go with two deep receivers downfield. They've only got two guys going down here. Brown has time, but the pass is just a bad pass, and there's too many defensive backs there. Cassie Francis coming across the middle. Remember, 5'9", Brown is. He's got to loft the ball a little bit. Couldn't get it in there. Cam at midfield on first down. Wide open is Sharp. Out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Greg Lee finally got to him. Now, that time, Sharp was just all alone. Sharp, Sharp's got a pulled hamstring. Went out in the first half, wanted to come back in. See how he's taped? His right leg is taped. He had two guys. He had a post pattern wide opener. He had Sharp, who's the leading receiver and a friend, which naturally you go to <laughs> on the sideline. See the hamstring? He couldn't run. He could have got in if, he, if his hamstring wasn't pulled, but he's, he's just kind of out there running around. Here he comes. Yeah, he's going to come out now out of Lyons, Georgia. That's 30 miles from Statesboro. He gets quite an ovation. Very popular. Great player through the years. And uh, all these guys are real close and play pretty well again. He has a good bloodline as well. First and 10. Ham will keep it. Oh, he's in for another touchdown. They say without hogs, and that's the offensive line's nickname, there would be no ham. I think ham, ham would exist anywhere, but the offensive line doing a nice job. And these guys are getting tired from Arkansas State. They've been running back and forth all night chasing this guy, and they just don't have the leg speed or the strength anymore. Now look, at, look at how quick he is. They just can't catch him. That's quickness, folks. Not a whole lot of blocking there. Foley's kick is good. And the score continues to mount. 41 to 9, a 99 yard drive. I said not a whole lot of blocking, but there was 27 Barron. Watch him make a great block for him on the corner. 27 takes out two guys. Tracy knows what to do when that happens. He goes in for yet another touchdown, 41 points. They say those collegiate receivers can block better than the professionals. Barron out of the slot position made one there. Witten. And it's taken in by Easley again. He's getting quite a workout. He is buried at the 24-yard line by David Hodge. The scoring drive, not 99 yards, but they are eight for nine. They went half the distance, two plays. They're all running in together now because Tracy Ham has turned it into uh, the Ham Show. Yeah. And that's why it's the Ham Bone, named after him. There's, there's Jemison, who's not been in, except for the two series that we earlier mentioned. He's a barber and a singer. He'll not be singing tonight. Seven rushes for 55 yards. Stopped at the 25 is Brown. Wayne Brown, David Hodge. Makes his second consecutive tackle, and Georgia Southern is smelling back-to-back -back national titles in Tacoma. A remarkable. Uh, third, it's their third year in Division I AA, and they've got well, what amounts to, shortly, two national titles if this lead holds up, and there's no reason to think that it won't. Second and nine, and Brown looking to throw. Swings it out to Boris Whiteside. Pretty good move there. He got rid of Matthews in a hurry. And he's out to the 38-yard line before Terry Young, brother of Nay Young, could bring him down. But Boris put on a move that uh, Flint Matthews will not soon forget. Number Watch number 58 lock up on this play. Matthews. 
Ooh, you never cross over. Don't cross your legs there. You cross them, you can't get back. Great play, great run. You, you get an idea of what they could do if they could get loose. At the 37, first and 10, Arkansas State. Brown keeps it on the option. And he spills a little thunder from uh, Tracy Ham. He's down at the 35-yard line. He dropped the ball, but only after he hit the turf. Nay Young stopped him. Appeared for a moment there that Brown would get the touchdown. One of the few times that Dwayne's been able to get to the corner. Watch 87, Tyrone Hull at the corner. He just kind of goes down, and Brown knows what to do with it. Now, right here, there's a nice play right there by Young making the play in the open field, stopping the touchdown. From the 35, first and 10. This time they're ready for the option. Flint Matthews and Sammy Williams, the defensive tackle, make the stop. We talked about earlier, we talked about how he calls the play at the line of scrimmage. What he does, what the game plan is, is that Brown comes to the line and counts the players. There's 11 players on each side, obviously, and he counts the short side. Which, which side has five players? And uh, normally Georgia Southern will play six players to the wide side of the field. That's why they run to the short side of the field. They'll run the option to the short side against the five players. On second and ten, goal chicanery. And coming out of there with it is Richard Kimball to the 15-yard line. Good fake by Dwayne Brown. He had Georgia Southern's backers frozen. And Kimball... Gets it to the 15 for another first down. Never seen anything like that. Watch Kimball turn his back. Him turn his back, 35. Brown slips in the ball. For some reason, that works. I don't know why. I don't know what the per Why would you turn your back? Evidently, somebody knows yeah. something that I don't know. Kimball's one of them. <laughs> it did work for a 20 yard. Option again, and Morris Whiteside appears to have plenty of room for the touchdown. Well, I tell you, that one looked easy, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Right up the field. And, and you know, the thing they did, they were able to get wide here. Now, Bowen, the safety, needs to come up and make this play. 36, he's just never going to get there. Too far away and too quick to the corner. What they have not been able to do is get to the corner. They did there and got a touchdown out of it. And Whiteside has played pretty well. I don't know that they really respected uh, Whiteside's outside speed that time. They didn't converge that quickly, and he made good use of it. They'll go for two here. They'll fake it up the middle, and the pass outside incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Kenneth Reed. Larry Lacewell's club does get six, but they still trail by a score of 41 to 15 with 5.35 to play in the third quarter. I'll go back to what I said at halftime. A defense needs to create some kind of insecurity in an offense. And by doing that, they need to make them turn it over or stop them in the backfield. And State has not done that. They've not gotten the penetration they need. They've not surrounded Ham. They have to send some people and just try and catch this guy in the backfield. If he completes a pass, the last drive was two plays, 50 yards. What have they got to lose? Ham, 396 total yards. He owns the record for this game at 504 a year ago. And the pitch is to Barron. He may get a yard or two. Greg Lee. Took him out of bounds and some extracurricular activity will garner a, a marker. And they may march off a few yards here against Arkansas State. You know, I don't think that penalty is warranted, and I'll tell you why. I, I think Lee made a good play, and the momentum was the ball carrier's momentum. So watch the ball carrier on this play. But watch, watch the ball carrier unload on Lee here and keep driving his legs. Yep. Hey, and I don't know that Lee with his head like that he doesn't know where he is I'm Followed just getting some heat here. automatic first down getting them heat from the producer there <laughs> telling me that I'm rooting for the defense <laughs> Fred Cadelli says wait a minute didn't you play linebacker yeah, weren't right. you on the defensive side have you know I never had a penalty <laughs> called on me it's tough from the bench you can't reach yeah. it from the bench at the 46 yard line it's first and 10 Barron on the counter play 
Taken out of bounds again by Lee at the 48. He'll be conservative over there this time. That was good defense all over the field. They're still fighting, and I, that's the mark of a champion, too. I think State still pounding away. They've got to be exhausted with all these guys running wide and all these patterns. Your legs get awful tired. Look at their schedule, though. Larry Lacewell this year, he took on Mississippi. Got a tie there. That's a club that's uh, in, a, in a pretty decent bowl game. Independence Bowl coming up. Beat uh, LSU in the Southeastern Conference, a Division I school, obviously. He has seen his team give up a lot of yards because of Tracy Ham, and he's at it again. Incomplete intended for Delano Little at the 45-yard line. Michael Adams there to provide coverage for Arkansas State. I think you make a good point, but I think what you're going to hear after this game is, I can't believe how quick they were. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it comes down to the the overall ability of the team. I think it comes down to Harris's quickness and Ham's quickness. And what they needed to do, they needed to commit so many people to Ham that their receivers were wide open. They didn't have enough people back. This team is as quick a team as I've ever seen. And they have two players, Harris and Ham in particular, that are as quick as any players yeah. I've ever seen. You're right. And Harris, that combination inside him and then Ham with that multidimensional talent of his. Third down and eight. Great call here, but a nice play by Dan Miller. He stayed home and made the stop of Gerald Harris. Five yards shy of the first down. Well, here's your pressure, and on a screen, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll let you come, but this is good pressure anyway. They send some people. Watch the dark shirts. They're coming now. And Ham, smart as a whip, picks it up, and that's a great job by Miller on Harris. Horton will call for the fair catch after the punt by Parker at the 20-yard line, and that's where it will be first and 10 for Arkansas State. Four minutes and 38 seconds are left from the Tacoma Dome. Ham and company lead by a bundle. Larry Lacewell's club is trailing Georgia Southern 41 to 15. The men from Jonesboro need to score and hurriedly. Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley with you. We're happy you joined us from the Tacoma Dome. And Dwayne Brown brings up his wishbone. He's looking for Cassie Francis, and he threw, overthrew him there by a, a wide margin. Second and ten coming up. You hear criticism of quarterbacks when pro scouts look for quarterbacks in college, actually, look for a guy who's tall. The reason that is is not because of the arm strength. It's because of the trajectory of the ball. A guy who's 5'9", has got to throw the ball higher. And uh, quite often, he'll overthrow a receiver uh, in a medium pattern like that. And Brown's been doing it all night. Second down and 10. He's in trouble now. And dumped by Wesley Lee. Backing up Robert Underwood, Lee has played well tonight at 5'11", 215 pounds. Larry Boone was also in there, the defensive guard from Conway, North Carolina. 41, left side of your screen. These guys have had a big night defensively. They take an awful long time to set up, too, in their passes, Arkansas State. At this point in the game, uh, they are predictable. People feel they're going to pass. They need to get that ball off a little bit quicker. Lee comes out limping, so Underwood back in. Look at the total yards. And I, I think the job done by the Georgia Southern defense shows up there. And there's the pitch outside to Andre Tate. Knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. The sophomore from Orlando, Sammy Williams, was in to make the stop. There's a late hit there, too, by uh, Bowen. Bowen came in afterwards after he was down out of bounds. Of course, of course, he was innocent. Yeah, James Carter. That's the other James <laughs> Carter. There's another one that we mentioned earlier that's uh, ineligible, the offensive lineman for tonight's game. That's, that's the wild, wild man. man. That's yeah. wild man Carter. Okay. Here's the tackle. And now you're going to see Bowen just making sure. And oh, a little bit after that. Automatic first down. There you go. A little bit extra extracurricular activity. And there was a yellow flag that was thrown right after <laughs> But he says, I'm the wild man. I can get away with that. Wild men, have, they have special rules That's for right. wild men out there. <laughs> At the 33, first and 10. 344 left in the third quarter. Jemison back into the game and up to the 38-yard line. Underwood and Donnie Allen combine on the stop. 
Jemison, we mentioned earlier, that he's a barber, and he cuts the hair of about 12 players on this team, and if you looked at the hairstyles, I don't know that I would allow him to do that. Right, he's kind of an architect barber. Yeah. It looked like he didn't finish his. Yeah. That shot we had of his hair, maybe we get that shot back. Looked like he kind of was in a hurry and he quit in the middle of it. Yeah. Dumped behind the line is Brown by Everett Sharp. The rover back shot through the gap and dumped him back at the 32-yard line. Well, Sharp is usually listed behind Danny Durham, but Durham moved up the linebacker, and Sharp moved into the backfield of Arkansas State and made the play. And that's another thing. They had some injuries on this defense and lost some people. There's Everett, a freshman. They do have some good young players uh, at Georgia Southern, too. This team will be maybe rebuilding a year or two, but they'll be back. They had some injuries, and they still played well. Wayne Brown adjusting his receivers. Cassie Francis asked to move up to the top of your screen. And on third and 11, Brown swings it out to Andre Tate. Nothing doing as Tyrone Hull stayed at home and Marker's down again. Another flag be, uh, behind a line of scrimmage. I don't know what that could be. Okay. Maybe an ineligible receiver. Yeah, it's, it's going to be on, uh, as you can see there, it's going to be on uh, state procedure call. Tyrone Hull pretty excited about it. That man not excited about much right now. What a great career he had, though, under Barry Switzer. The Selman brothers, he had a chance to coach all of them. The glory days of Oklahoma that obviously have continued since his exit. But he has brought much, much attention to Jonesboro, Arkansas in the Southland Conference. Arkansas, great state for football. University of Arkansas, Arkansas State. People in Arkansas really support their program. Sampson will punt it away at about his 20. Bells are back deep. Ooh. Samson's done a great job tonight. Belzer takes it at the 23. It's outside, but Horton horse collars him at the 30-yard line. And that's where Georgia Southern takes over. Two minutes and seven seconds are left here. Term in football they call breaking down. And what it means is you bend your knees when you get to the point. Now watch Horton. Slips the block. And watch when he gets down and he's going to break down. Watch him bend his knees and get set so he has leverage either way. See that? See that? See how he goes back and forth? He's able to run Belzer. <laughs> it's a good thing he did, too, because Belzer was, was thinking long term there. First down and 10 with the ball at the 30 for the Eagles. Harris, three or four. On top of him, Clint Ledbetter for Arkansas State. That's the play that Larry Lacewell felt, well, we've got to stop this. Now, we may not be able to stop Ham, but we've got to at least contain Harris up the middle. They haven't been able to do it. They, not early in the game. They never did. You're right. And, and when they didn't, they had to commit their defense. They changed the way they play their defensive line, shaded inside, try to help them. When you do that against a team like this that can go wide, they'll get 41 points, and they did. At the 29, second and six. Ham. Brought down by Dan Miller. Transfer player. Can read well. Very smart linebacker. Got into a fight, though, with a dog as a youngster. I don't know if uh, he got smart after that. Got a scar. He's got a scar on his yeah. face and, and over his eye. Says he doesn't like dogs. Yep. Glad I'm not a dog. Ball is at the 34-yard uh, line, where he'll be third down and six. Transferred from South Carolina. He's a good player. Yeah, he is. They're lucky to have him. They're happy to have him. He's made some outstanding plays tonight. He stayed home on that uh, screen pass earlier. There's the pressure. Yeah. And look at him get away from it. Well, what, what more can you do if you're the Arkansas State defense? He's all the way to the 49-yard line with a first down. Charlie Frederick had to haul all the way from his nose tackle position to bring him down from behind. I'm going to be picky here, and I'm going to tell you. They got the pressure, but one of the things when you blitz and when you get pressure, you have to stay in your lanes with a guy like this. You see how they get caught inside? You got to keep, you got to surround it. Of course, I'm up here. I can surround him up here. It's a lot easier to talk about it. Yeah. But that's that's really what you need to do against a scrambler. This guy is the consummate scrambler, Miller. Coming out with a, what appears to be, he's favoring his leg a bit. He checks out of the game. 
Keith Keller has come into the game for him. There he is out of Fort Myers, Florida, Dan Miller. Delano Little and Belzer are in the game at the wide receiver spots. Up at the top of your screen on first and 10 from the 49 of Georgia Southern. There's that play again. It went for a touchdown once, and he nearly broke it again. Charlie Frederick made the shoestring to stop, and Tracy hurdled his own offensive lineman that time. Well, they did it again. See, they got some pressure on him right away, and the play broke down right away. And if you can make him commit, at least the rest of the defense can react to do it. Last two plays, they've done it. Tracy Ham moving in on another record in Division One AA National Championship play. It's about all that remains in question here as we enter the fourth quarter. The Indians have uh, a little color in pageantry here as well from Jonesboro. Hey, they got here. Yeah, they did. Only they, two teams get here. 41 to 15, they trail. You know, another amazing thing, Georgia Southern has played nine games on the road, including this one out of 14. Now, what did he, what, I had a quote here from, uh, from Irk about bus rides. They, most of their games, they take a bus. <laughs> Not here. Second and six as we open the fourth quarter. Ham incomplete. Appeared to be a little confusion there between Ham and Barron, the intended receiver. Also adding to that confusion was Nellums, who was right. coming through the line for Arkansas State. Well, right, it's pressure. He had to throw it before he was ready, one of the few times tonight, and that's how you stop a passing game. And He actually stood flat-footed, which he hasn't done all night either, and the pocket closed in on him, and he had to throw the ball away. Now, there are his rushing yards we just showed you there, and you got to figure the only reason he's in there is to break the record that he holds from last year's one double-a championship in total yards of 504 third down six Nellums gets him this time that will not add to his total yardage output and markers fly again ham is down at the 44 yard line well th th this is a late flag Nellums again honorable mention all-american twice Twice all conference, number 46 from the back. Ham never sees him. And there's that pressure. And they're calling a face mask yep. on him. He got his hand on the face mask, and that's a tough break, and definitely not intentional. The non flagrant foul. Oh, you got. A oh, little indecision there. I'm sure that they're going to make the same call that was made earlier. Let's make it official, though. Pass, five yard penalty by the defense to keep third down. All right. Third down and nine for Tracy Ham. Chief appears to be a bit unhappy. Chief looks like he's out of his time yeah, zone. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> this TP in the Tacoma Dome is uh, not to his liking. Yes. Third down and nine. Delano Little is flanked to the bottom of your screen. And Nellums is right there again. Marvin Nellums from Memphis, Tennessee, got through for the second consecutive time. This time, no non-flagrant foul. And it will be fourth down. Parker will have to punt. Watch his feet. Watch how he keeps his feet going, number 46. I want you to watch when he gets contact on the blocker. See the old feet there? As he plants him, turns him upfield, and he catches the quickest of the quick. Nice roll for Pat Parker. They'll down it at about the, the 11 or 12 yard line. And with 14 minutes left in our game, Irk Russell getting closer to his second straight national title. Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley with you. Almost all of the fourth quarter remains, and it's 41 to 15. Larry Lacewell and his Arkansas State Indians need to mount some offense quickly. Larry's going to wear out their rug there. He's been walking back and forth in that one spot here for three quarters. Wayne Brown brings up his troops at the 14-yard line. Kimball still in at fullback for the injured Jemison. Oh, 
fake is to Jemison, and the pitch is to Boris Whiteside. It's been a productive play of late for Arkansas State. It's out to the 35-yard line, but when you're down by this much in the fourth quarter, again, that takes some time off the clock. Brown makes this play. Watch him go right at David Hodge, number five. Look at, watch this. He makes Hodge hesitate, and that gets Boris loose. All Boris did was catch it and run upfield. To give Brown credit there, Southland Conference Player of the Year, the quarterback, he made the play. Boris Whiteside on your screen made the yards. And he did get out of bounds, and that did stop the clock in that case. Kimball to the 41. Flint Matthews made the stop. Richard Kimball. Where do you where remember that name from? A uh, fugitive. Remember that? That's right. Run for your life, Richard Kimball. David Jansen. So what's the words? I can't remember the words at the end of that show. All I know is he. Oh, had there's a reason why you can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Second> <laughs> had his pillowcase packed and he's headed down the road That's every right. week. Second down and three. <laughs> Gazzy Francis is in the game up at the top of your screen. The ball at the 42. Nice pass and catch by Andre Tate. To the 27. Terry Young made the stop and markers are down at the line of scrimmage. Boy, there was some touch on that pass. Disregard the flag. An accidental flag. Okay, now you're seeing this team what they do best. This is this is a nice play by Brown. Here's Tate, C36 leaving. Coming out of the backfield. I saw him on a linebacker who never shows up. And that's just a great pass. Lofted by the smallest quarterback, but he got it up in the air and Bulldog down to the ground. That's a good play. Good play to run, really, when you got a wishbone. If you can get that back out of the backfield and have enough time, it'll work. We talk about Ham so much tonight because of his productivity, but Dwayne Brown was recruited by Division I schools as well, Memphis State and Ole Miss. They, too, wanted him to play elsewhere, and he wanted to be a quarterback. Kimball bounces off Underwood and is inside the 20 to the 15. Terry Young, along with Flint Matthews, Wesley Lee all in on the pile for Georgia Southern. Nice I like run. this guy, Kimball. Yeah, they call him the Mustang, and he is a horse. He's just a red shirt freshman, 35. Watch him keep his legs going. Keeps him go boom, boom, and he's hit into the secondary, and now he's just kind of lowered his shoulder, delivered a blow and fighting. That'll that'll serve him well next year, this guy. He's a young kid, and he's not gonna give up. Brown holds on to it. A pretty good idea considering how many were staying with Andre Tate, but Danny Durham made the stop at the 16, may have lost a yard. What a play by Durham. Durham took the pitch man and the quarterback and made the tackle on that play. You got to believe that the, the performance here of the Georgia Southern defense, uh, Mike Healy is the defensive coordinator, but you know Irk had something to do yeah. with this, that wide tackle six, and he really got him up for this one, and, and they've done a heck of a job. Complete. Barnett got a hand on it at the five, but Chris Aiken was there quickly to provide coverage. Pass a bit behind him. Nice throw. But catchable. By yeah, that was a nice throw by Brown. It was low where it should have been and uh, might have been caught. Frustrating for a great team, as Arkansas State has been all year, to go down this way. Marvin Nellums, who's played so well, the cheese man. He wanted to add some cheese to Tracy's ham, but he's been unable to do it for the better part of this game. Third and 11, nearly picked off by Brad Bowen. Andre Tate, the intended receiver for Arkansas State. That was defense all over the field. Great defense there by Southern. They got the pressure. Watch the pressure, and then you're going to see Bowen coming up from the safety. Look at that. They're all over him. And look at Bowen committing himself. 36 against 36 and making the play. That's a terrific play by the whole defense. From Plantation, Florida. The ball at the 16, it's fourth down now, and you know Arkansas State has to wing it. Look out for Tate out of the backfield. Oh, and here comes Boone, and he lowers the boom on Brown.
Who said this defense was a liability for Eric Russell? Very tough offensively when you've got a wishbone and you become predictable like that. You know you've got to throw on fourth down. Boone never hesitates. Boom. And poor Brown, he's had a rough night. And so is that man, watching his proud team get manhandled. They have been manhandled, both offensively and defensively. Eric Russell would be the first to tell you that his defense, he would not have expected to have played this well tonight. They have done the job against Arkansas State. Harris is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Frederick and Ledbetter met Harris at the point of the, uh, of the handoff. Uh, that handoff almost went to Frederick there, number 70. It's tough to get, you know, emotion in this game is so, I mean, you get so high for a game, and when you get ahead by this many points and you're thinking about, obviously, a celebration, uh, you have to be real careful because it is such, it, it's a game where you have to go full speed all the time, and sometimes you do slow down. It appears in the later possessions that Southern has slowed down some and lost their concentration, as you see right there. Yep. Ricky Harris took about three steps beyond the line of scrimmage after Frederick had made a move in the interior alignment, but he got back in time. And then Harris took off, and that'll cost him five. He was wide open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get a head start. Dead you... ball foul procedure by the offense. Repeat second down. It's funny, though. these guys are so quick, you, can't, you have to look twice to see if they're off sides or they're just that quick. Guy to watch you. Watch the motion guy, the uh, the slot back. Watch how quick they go in motion. Barron is the case that time. Harris. Now you wonder if Barnett can catch him. He can't. Touchdown. No wonder he was so anxious to get off the line. Nine yards to Ricky Harris without a head start yeah. this time. Well, they come with pressure, and here they come. Nobody back there, and Ham does a great job of just lofting the thing. Look at this, right in stride. Key to the play going all the way is the pass. Harris getting it in stride, and you don't need to see the rest. He made it. Markers are down on the extra point by Foley. It's 47 to 15. Now, if it's against Arkansas State, Georgia Southern should decline, and they will. Offside defense. White cat. <laughs> so, with the extra point, Georgia Southern has uh, built its lead. Defense is offside. The points are good. The point is good. You missed her on the kickoff. And it's now 48 to 15. At the risk of being repetitive, we've talked about Ham so much. Watch his eyes and how quickly he reacts to this thing. He's looking right at this blitz. Now, he's a great athlete. He's a smart cookie, too. See that? He knows right where to go. The hot receiver is Harris on the blitz. And then it's a foot race, and State has not won any foot races tonight. Our director, Mark Payton, and our crew, again, getting the nice shot of our quarterback, case and study, Tracy Ham, finding the blitz and then finding that man, Ricky Harris, out of Harlem, Georgia. You pointed it out earlier. He was a leading rusher two years ago, and they just kind of forgot about him. Yep. It's too bad you can't pitch it in two directions at once. That's the longest play in history. Uh, Georgia Southern, 79 yards, and you see the sadness on the Arkansas State sidelines. They had a 77-yarder earlier this year, but that surpassed it by two. Pass to Harris. Easily at his three-yard line, brings it in for Arkansas State. And he crawls to the 21-yard line, where the Indians take over first and 10. Darrell Riggins made the stop for Georgia Southern. 10 minutes and 47 seconds are left. And Georgia Southern had to score 44 points to win it last year against Furman, 44-42, on a pass to Frankie Johnson, who was injured earlier this year for Georgia Southern, unable to play. They 
Their leading receiver. Yeah, their leading out. receiver. He's out, and yet here they are again. So is Carter. Right. Peanut Carter is out. He was a starter. Good thing they didn't have those two guys. Right. They had 48 points even without them. Brett Barnett gets it on the end around. He's stopped by Wildman Carter at the 20-yard line. The wild man ran him down there. You're looking for reverses now. Cross screens, that type of thing. You're in the huddle. When you're in a defensive huddle, you talk about that type of thing. If you have a lead like this, big play. Counters. Flea flickers. Carter, a true freshman. He'll grow even more in the years that follow. He's already pretty active. Kimball gets about seven yards. Wesley Lee made the stop for Georgia Southern, but again, the clock continues to tick with 10 minutes left. And you look across the way at Larry Lacewell with the headsets off now. And, well, no, he got him back on again. He had them off when his team was playing defense. He's got them back on now, though. But you wonder that the play selection here becomes paramount to a certain extent, but you know he'd like to see the clock tick a little bit here. It's important for him to also be coaching yep. his team. I mean, he, he needs to show these guys. There's that play again. Yeah. And Kimball gets it to the 40-yard line. Brad Bowen made the stop. They got about the same amount of yardage that time. I'd like to be able to ask somebody, why does he turn around on this play, and why does it fool the defense? Look at that. That's uh, that's kind of a riot there. Kind of slips it to him. It's like a draw play. I guess that's what they're going to call it, a draw play. I, yeah, maybe a Statue of Liberty. Thank yes. you, Fred. I tell you, I like that guy Kimball. He yeah. runs hard. He's a nice looking back, a young kid. Brown throws for Whiteside, incomplete. Terry Young and Bowen were in the general area. 50 yards in the air. There's no doubt that Brown can throw the ball. But with this offensive scheme and with a runner like Jemison, whom they have relied on a great deal this year, the wishbone has uh, answered all their wishes in Jonesboro until tonight. Statistics, passing statistics for wishbone quarterbacks are very misleading uh, because of play action. A lot of times you throw in a wide open receiver, it's very difficult to tell whether an option quarterback can throw until you play against him and get, get him behind. Parker's down. Could be a holding call thrown in that general area as Brown is brought to the turf by Kenny Butler. That should back them up. I believe that's the first holding uh, call we've had today. Uh, it was pretty much a penalty-free first half as well. Holding by the offense. Decline. Third down. So they elect to decline it. The third down and 16 coming up. They're already celebrating on the Georgia Southern sidelines. And Tracy Ham leading the cheers, as you might expect. He's the leader. A little more quiet on the Arkansas State sideline. Show some dexterity here. Oh, look at that. To the 46-yard line. Everett Sharp finally got to him. We've been hearing about him all night. Here's a little bit of Dwayne Brown and why he's the Southland Conference Player of the Year and why he is a great wishbone quarterback. Now watch him work. Watch this last cut he makes. This one right here. That's a nice one. There it is. Whoops. Not quite a first down, but they'll go for it. Wayne Brown out of the Southland Conference Player of the Year. That's a pretty tough league in Division I AA. And he'll be back. He's up to the 49-yard line. Close to the first down. On fourth down, it will apparently be just a bit shy, though. I don't think that they'll even uh, attempt a measurement here. They won't. The ball is turned over to Georgia Southern, and... Bad gets worse for Larry Lacewell. Ken Burnett is in the game now for Georgia Southern for the first time at quarterback. Out of Watkinsville, Georgia, just a sophomore. 
He's got two 40-yard touchdown passes out of those five completions to his credit. Eight minutes and 18 seconds for Burnett to operate with. Markers down as Gary Miller burrows in for a yard or so with Charlie Frederick leading the charge for Arkansas State. This procedure here on the near side on uh, Southern, I think. Yeah. Had a man, man jump a little early. Touch number 78. There he goes, trying to get a running start. That's Tony Smith. He got a new quarterback, new cadence. Those things happen. The guy to watch, the thing that really amazes me, I talked about it earlier, is the slot back in motion. How quick and how fast they go in motion. And Miller gets it again. Dumped by Ron Hillers, the junior from Delhi, Iowa. The reason they do that on offense is because it is a motion offense and it's an option offense. And that guy will, in pro football, a lot of times you see a tight end or an H-back go in motion. It tips off the way the play is going to go, what side it's going to go to. But here, they put him in motion quickly like that so they don't tip the play. The snap comes right after the motion. Obviously, it works pretty well for Georgia Southern. Miller gets the call, and he stopped after a yard gain, perhaps two. Third down and 11 coming up. You talk about the run and shoot. Now, Kansas has decided to use it over in the Big Eight. Mouse Davis made it popular, but this is really not the same kind of run and shoot. He doesn't use the, the slot backs really in a slot, and they become A backs and, and flank just outside each tackle. But it's really designed more for the run and for Tracy Hand. Yeah, no, this is not a, this is not a run and shoot. This is an option. This, yeah. is, a, this is a triple option. Uh, uh, offense here. Same set or similar set. It's a veer. Yeah, what it is. It's a very similar to the veer on. Burnett's in trouble and he's dumped back at his 44 yard line by Keith Keller, the reserve linebacker. So for the first time tonight, minus yardage on a potential drive for Georgia Southern. Look at those stats for Tracy Hand. He took a few losses in the third quarter late before coming out of the game with 489 total yards. We mentioned he already holds the record 504 in this same championship game a year ago against Furman. And by the way, he will graduate in the spring. Yep. Along with 17 others. Every senior on this team will graduate. Now that's remarkable. Yes. That's what college athletics is all about and something that the NCAA can be proud of with its one double-A champion. So what did Irk say at uh, first day of practice? He got 124 of the most enthusiastic non-athletes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. That might have been a... I don't know. He might have been wrong. He must have had a few. So Pat Parker will punt at this time. Todd Horton down at the other end. They're coming after Ooh. him. With everybody, and flags are down again. The punt of forward and an even poorer bounce. Bad bounce, my word. Stop that thing. Good heavens, Terry Young. It looked, uh, it looked like our center moved the ball, and their defense jumped. And I guess it is Southern called against off. their defense. Southern was offsides, I believe. No, it was down offsides on Arkansas on the, State. Arkansas State. With Stan Sutton. White right now, Pat Parker. Yeah, look at Larry. This is a dripping faucet for Larry Lacewell here. I'm sure we'll get a chance to punt that one again. Or I'm sure that we want to punt that one yes, again. Yes, we do. I'm sure that Parker now. We've got to watch Ken Butler. He almost backed up into the punter that Defense. time. He's got to step Offside. forward. Offside. Repeat fourth down. And make his block. Maybe this will get Georgia Southern some respect. Last week, we knock off the number one team undefeated in Reno. This week, we knock off the number one team in Arkansas State. Pat Parker Good. gets it away, gets knocked down, but his own blocker was sort of blocked into him. Yeah, Ken Butler just backed up into it. There's, there's 100 flags go down at the other end on the play. I didn't see what happened down there, Bill. I, we must have bumped the... Didn't uh, either. Bumped the receiver, bumped after the receiver after he caught it. After... Um, 
after he called for a fair catch. That was Todd Horton. Todd Horton, kind of a half-hearted play at somebody. I see all our coaches came out of the press box and are down on the field now just enjoying these moments. What's he called? Looks like he's called a touchdown. I don't know what the heck he's doing down there, but anyway, the score is 48 to 15. And with 558 to play, we'll be back in a minute. For the NCAA Division I AA championship game, the Diamond Bowl has not been a good one for Larry Lacewell. Wayne Brown with a first down at the 33-yard line. Cassie Francis, they pitches it to Tate, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 39. Did not fool Eric Russell's defense at all, and that has really been the surprise. If we've seen one tonight, it's been that that man's defense has played extremely well. Well, you remember at the head we talked about the split six and why he sticks with it, because he felt he knows the defense. He ran it for 17 years at Georgia, and he could make adjustments with that defense. Evidently, he made some adjustments Tonight, with the help of his defensive coordinator, Mike Healy, they run that defense together, and they did a great job. There goes Kimball up to the wall. He's beyond the 50. Well, he won't stop. Down at the 44-yard line, Nay Young finally made the stop. And Irk Russell is the last four-year letterman at Auburn. I got a Had question for you after this. I got to show you this. We'll show you Kimball. Watch his legs. Yep. This is the key to any running back, balance and leg strength. Watch this guy's leg strength. Get his head and his shoulder down and just drive and mm -hmm. drive. What four sports did he letter in? Football, basketball, baseball. What was the fourth one? No, we'll wait until after the play. And <laughs> I'm going to ponder that, that question for a moment. I have the answer. Gazzy Francis, he's looking to throw. Barnett was open, but he couldn't get rid of it because Boone was in his way, and here goes Gazzy. Touchdown, Arkansas State! A former quarterback, and he negotiated behind the line of scrimmage much like a quarterback. In fact, shades of uh, Tracy Ham from Cassie Francis here. This guy's a great story. Number seven. I watch him work. It's supposed to be a pass, but he's going to break loose on the run. He was a backup quarterback in 82. Had a severe leg injury. They said he should never play again. They say when he runs fast, he's still got a slight limp. Rehabilitated for two years. Win or lose, this has got to be a big thrill for Francis. Nice job down the line, great effort. He was a quarterback, as Tim said, and he hurt his leg while playing quarterback. They'll go for two. Brown, looking for some help, can't find any, and just unloads. 48 to 21, our score, after a lengthy touchdown play by Kazzy Francis. ESPN's live presentation of the Division I AA National Championship, Georgia Southern and Arkansas State, has been brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. By Casio, makers of data bank watches and data cal calculators. And by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. You know what's coming here, an onside kick. Frank Richards is lined up in a bevy of black jerseys up at the top of your screen for Arkansas State. Let's see if they stay onside here on this kick. Well, he goes right to Belzer. He may score here. There's a seam, and he stopped at the 32. Horton saved it along with Richards. That nearly backfired against the Indians. Not a bad kick. It, it, actually, the, the way that was kicked was good. It needed to be a little more shallow. He kicked it too deep, kicked it behind that front line. He got the hop. Pelzer got the hop and, and took off. A good try. And Georgia Southern has a first down with the ball at the 31-yard line. Five minutes and 10 seconds are left from the Tacoma Dome. Tim Brando and Kevin Kiley with you. We're happy you joined us here. It has been an offensive showcase for Eric Russell's Eagles. They've tried this with Miller a few times. It hasn't worked. Charlie Frederick 
made the stop. Eric Russell lettered in four sports. Now, you say, uh, obviously, three of them are automatic. Football, What's basketball, baseball. My question to you is, what was the fourth sport? I got to believe that, man, it looks like that chess team. He was on the <laughs> chess team. No, I would have said swimming, but it's right. tennis. Tennis. And not only that, two years ago, there it is, right there. And two years ago, he was the state champ, 50 and over, in tennis. Don't you know he had a menacing look when he served a rocket at you? You're a tennis player. Why don't yep. you challenge him? <laughs> huh? Yeah, but I'm a bad B player, though. <laughs> Burnett. And we had a whistle stop play. So we'll wait and determine what the problem is this time. Procedure again. New quarterback. Tough time for a proud defensive unit to be on the field. Arkansas State with inside five minutes to go. They've been battered. Net ball foul. Procedure by the offense. Repeat second down. And the championship ring still resides in Statesboro. It's a nice ring. I wonder if we get one for announcing the game. What do you think? <laughs> we may get pinned, but that'll be about it. Inside the 30 to the 26 yard line is Burnett. Keith Harms, a reserve right side tackle, made the stop. Right. They go with the quarterback draw again. And the same problem again, procedure. No wonder it works so well. Now, you tell me that's not the back of a tennis player there. <laughs> huh? I wonder what he started. Did they wear the long pants? Oh, they probably did, didn't they? Yeah, no. more than likely with yeah. pleats. They with may have pleats. had pleats <laughs> on those pants back then. I think he played a defensive game of tennis. Yeah. How, do you, how do you do that? Wasn't serving volley. Yeah. You hit it to him and he'd keep it. He wouldn't hit it back. Yeah, it was just a serve. <laughs> Second and 21. Gary Miller inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Keith Keller in on the pile for Arkansas State. You know, since they won the national championship at uh, Georgia Southern, their enrollment has increased. It's up 800 yep. since the national championship and up 28% this year. Uh, talk about publicity. I guess there's no such thing as bad publicity. People love a winner. Yep. And they're getting the players that they feel they should get in recruiting. Burnett with that left arm for Chandler incomplete. Up on top and nearly with our camera. Our cart camera kept busy there. Did he get the shot? <laughs> well, he's there now. All right, here we got it. We got it. Here you're gonna you're gonna watch the perils of being a cameraman here at ESPN. Watch Chandler. Here he comes. We we're on a truck here, by the way. Darren says, I always wanted to be in television. Now, that's a, pre that's a pretty good camera. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's got nerves of steel hanging there like that. But would he have been as brave if he weren't on top of a pickup truck? Yeah. At the 17, it's taken in by Horton. Arkansas State will have it first and 10 with 3.11 to play. Darren Chandler on the sidelines there who uh, almost became a cameraman moments ago. He's an interesting study. He caught three passes against Florida in the opening game loss, 38 to 14. Did not catch another pass from uh, Tracy Ham throughout the rest of the year. That's all right. He's happy to be here and uh, play another ring. ring. Yeah. That's Kimball up to the 30-yard line. Mark Robbins has checked into the game for Dwayne Brown at quarterback for Arkansas State. It's a first and ten for the Indians. There are his numbers. Out of Mississippi is Robbins. We had to cross over into that neighboring state to pick him up. That's difficult to recruit if you're Arkansas State. You talk about Arkansas's competition, Ole Miss, Memphis State only an hour away from Jonesboro. Larry Lacewell's done the job. with tape behind him will get it to the 35 and some letter was popped from Danny Durham 
That guy's a hitter, Durham, the rover back, who's been utilized at a linebacking spot for the injured Thomas Porter to a certain extent tonight. Robbins is a big guy. He's 6'1", 210, and there was a story about he was a starting quarterback yep. neck and neck with Brown, and he was injured, and Brown took over and became a great player. This guy's an excellent player, Robin. Kimball breaks free to midfield. Taz Dixon made the stop for Georgia Southern, but not before another first down. Now you give me three of Richard Kimball, and you got a backfield. That guy can run. And running hard the whole game. They've been behind most of the time he's been in here, and he's run hard all the time. I was about to say, if there's a silver lining for Lacewell tonight, it would be that without Jemison, he got a lot from Kimball. 105 yards and 11 carries. That's a good deal. There he goes again. Inside the 35 to the 31, he'll pad his statistical data. The remainder of the way, Flint Matthews came in to make the stop. Good block by Weisman, the center here. And watch how quick Kimball gets to the line of scrimmage. Look at the blocking by the offensive line. This guy's powerful. He knows when to get it going and put his head down and drive with those legs. He's a good player. Early in the second half, particularly after the first half drives, so one would think that Jemison having him might have made a difference, but not in the second half. Kimball's been there, the holes have been there, and he's made good use of them. Robbins pitches it out to James McCarley. Knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line by Milton Gore. They're after our camera people. That was another one. Came awful close. Yep. I think that's Gore, and I think he picked up the brunt of our cart camera. He's down on the ground right now. That's a nice job by Robbins again on the pitch. Terrific job. Well, are those guys happy? Well, they're right. How many times do you see a guy hold up a finger? I'm number one, and he's you know, number 82 or something. These guys are number one. They'll be diving in Eagle Creek for yeah. sure when they get back to Statesboro. Yeah, Eagle Creek will be overflowing. Yep. A minute 15 is left. They're checking on Gore. There he is. They'll bring in Oliver Davis for him. You get a good look at the plain uniform there. Another story in Irk Russell's story is they asked him, so Irk, why don't you put some stripes on the pants? Jazz them up a little bit. Irk said, eh, it's $5 for stripes. He says, I, I, I need chin straps and helmets. I could spend that money a little bit better. And well, these guys get, don't need stripes. When you get your first football at Kmart, <laughs> yeah, that's you right. know you're operating on a limited budget. Well, we can get a couple more footballs. <laughs> <laughs> Two national championships in five seasons. Did not have a program to work with. And Irk Russell has just done an outstanding job at Statesboro, Georgia. You talk about leading a good job, working for Vince Dooley. That's not a, that's not a bad gig. Nice hit by Taz Dixon. Well, he Cassie caught, Francis uh, caught the brunt of that. There's that defense again. Uh, Russell coming out here and watch this hit here and there's this defense that was so maligned all year. Boy, that's a heck of an effort there by Dixon. You talk about this program five years ago they were playing the Fort Benning Doughboys and uh, the Jacksonville Police Department. Yeah, Magnum Force. Yeah, the name Magnum of that team. Force. They yeah. won the game 16 to 7. They've been winning ever since. Yeah. Robbins is in trouble. Gets out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Jeff Banks, the sophomore from Covington, Georgia, leading the charge for the Eagles. 104 is left in our game. It'll be a fourth down and four situation for Robbins and company. Robbins a senior, and uh, this is it for him. That last game in college is a tough one. Tough psychologically, it's a tough one when you lose it championship game. Of course, when you get to the championship, that's something to be proud of. But to lose like this, and for people like Robbins who didn't play much, they want to make the most of these last few minutes. The option play, Tate and Bowen really forced that play. Danny Durham polished up, but credit Bowen for coming up and forcing it inside, and the ball will be turned over to Georgia Southern. 
And all that remains is for 58 seconds to come off the clock. And the Indians will just have to endure less than a minute. There's the man of the moment, Tracy Ham. This is his last game as a collegian. Pro prospect, you bet. Absolutely. Canada, for sure. He, he'd be... Uh, the field is wider and longer. Think about that. What a horror show that would be, yeah. a wider and a longer field with this guy. Ken Burnett will hold on to it. He'll have to snap it one more time. Oh, I, I didn't... I, I think they're setting up Burke Russell here. Did you see that? I don't know. That's pretty cold water. Irk doesn't have a hat on. Yeah, I mean, Bill Parcells has more hair than Irk. <laughs> yeah, they're setting him up, no doubt about it. They're setting somebody up. I think that's Little over there. Fred Stokes, the offensive lineman. Aiken has a hand on it. And here it comes. Berg Russell, that felt like champagne. Is that tennis, anyone? <laughs> they love him. He's a nice man. And they really like him down there, and they should. Now they give him a massage. Yeah. He coaches for fun, and you can't have any more fun than winning a national championship. Arkansas State loses to Irk Russell's Eagles, 48-21. A gracious loser, Larry Lacewell, trying to find Irk. Well, you have to wonder, how much more can he accomplish now? I'll tell you what, when you look back on this thing and... 20 years, I mean this from a historical perspective, and you think about what we've talked about here tonight, what this man has accomplished, and the players, walk-on players, 124 walk-on players five years ago, the way this thing began, it's absolutely incredible that right now he stands there in the middle of the field with two national championships. 20 years from now, I think we'll appreciate him even more than we do tonight. Eric Russell's club has done it, 48 to 21, and they were overflowing with joy in Statesboro. Our final score, Georgia Southern 48, Arkansas. The time. Uh huh. There Good. we are. All right, now I'm on. Hey. Uh, just, uh, I know Rick Mann is back at, at Georgia Southern will be uh, letting folks know what time the plane will be in. We'll be coming into Butler Aviation. You could probably call Butler Aviation. Uh, we hope there are no delays. We hope to get back around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, Butler Aviation at the Savannah International Airport. And there you see the national championship T-shirts, uh, sweatshirts that you can get. And take a look at that. And there's the eagle that um, with the big crown on his head walking across the country. And the two years, 1985, 86, they've already got these things made up, and they're going to be selling them, and they'll be ready and available. And Georgia Southern has won it just one more time, the second national championship and historic night, 48 to 21, the most points that's ever been scored in a championship game. And also uh, Tim Foley, four for four on field goals tonight. I don't think he came in the second half. No, did he? it's just a great tribute to our seniors, to Tracy Hammond. Just so happy for them that he could have the great night that, that they should have and have it on national television. He's just a great, great player. He's been a great person for us. He, he's done everything we've asked him to do and done it in great style. And just a tribute to Coach Russell, his leadership, to all our Southern boosters, all the faculty and students back at Georgia Southern have been so supportive of us. Dale Lick up there in the snow drift up in Maine. God bless all of them. Yeah, Dale Lick was a guy who had the vision and the, um, the guts to, to go through with this program and, and bring the people in that was necessary, go after Bucky Wagner, go after Irk Russell. When everybody said that he was nuts, 
to try to go get Eric Russell after George had won that national well, championship. Well, they, they said that about a lot of things that he did, but I guarantee <laughs> he would compete. <laughs> and you better get up early in the morning if you're going to outwork him. But it's just great. It's unbelievable. I just, uh, you know, it's just hard to, to explain and have an adjective to explain just how good you feel. We want to thank everybody for joining us along the Lewis Sports Network tonight as well. We also appreciate all the technical staff, and we appreciate you folks staying up with us and joining us. Georgia Southern has won this thing out here in the Tacoma Dome two years in a row. 48-21 to 21 the final tonight. Tracy Hamm, Ricky Harris, uh, Gerald Harris, all in their final games for Georgia Southern, just playing their hearts out, playing against a team that just knew that they were going to win this ball game without any trouble whatsoever. Well, they just... Uh... <laughs> You just can't do the things that they tried to do before the ball game. Shows you how wrong it can be. That's right. You just never know that what's going to happen. The national when you championship trophy has just been handed out down there on the field, and, and the players are, are coming off on the sidelines, and they, uh, the final, they haven't come out quite with the final statistics yet, but nevertheless. We uh, had well over 550 yards at the end of the third quarter. Now, I know that the last part of the, of the fourth quarter when we put in the, the reserves, we didn't get many yardage, but... We'll probably be well over 600 yards again, and and uh, that's just unbelievable. Against this is a great Arkansas State team. It really team is. Team that tied Old Miss, beat Memphis State. Both these teams, neither of these teams, had lost to a one double A team, and uh, just uh, it's just a great, great tribute to, to everybody. And just I hope everybody just enjoys the all the pleasure and all the honor that they deserve. Folks, come out and see the Eagles. They aren't a fluke. They have done something that no other team has done. You have watched history tonight. Uh, I hope you came out and watched Tracy Ham at some point in the four years that he played for Georgia Southern in person because you really saw something special. You saw something special here tonight as well. We appreciate your being with us. And for everybody here, for everybody back there at the, uh, the Lewis Broadcasting um, Network, we appreciate you joining us tonight. We thank you. Um, Thank everybody, all of our sponsors who were who were so kind to, to donate the money that was necessary to make these broadcasts possible. And uh, Bucky, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you, Bill. We made it through. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we, though? So we're going to wrap it up from here. Thank you very much tonight for joining us from Tacoma, Washington. I'm Bill Edwards. Remember the score once again, Georgia Southern 48, Arkansas State 21 for the second national championship in a row. From Tacoma, good night, everybody. <laughs>